I am live from my family's home in a place that isn't my home. I was going to say where they live, didn't feel comfortable doing it, changed my mind halfway through the sentence. So I am wanting to talk with you about so many things that happened in the last two days. I was like, you know, I'm going to take a vacation. I'm going to maybe stream once, but here it is, my first day on vacation. I didn't even bring a tripod because I was like, I'm going to dedicate myself to taking time off giving myself some breathing room, and that is why this is probably going to be very shaky. Hindsight, 2020, uh, an hour of holding my hand like this was a bold, dumb move. Uh, anyway, so uh, welcome to Koi Cubed, Koi's Comics, Cinema, and Curls, where we talk about all things comic books, all things movies, all things fitness, all them things, because I'm very excited to share things with you. My arm is already tired. Uh, so I am, let's see, how are we going to do this? Uh, okay, hold on. I'm gonna do this. My mom's gonna help me get set up because my mom is a champion. Well, I don't want your arms to get tired. I can prop. Oh man. Okay, my mom's <laughs> holding this for me. She, my mom is a literal saint, guys. When I say my mom is the best, uh, my mom is the best. Uh, and I'm gonna adjust my poor tripod of a mother's <laughs> hands so it's <laughs> Jesus. I'm an evil person. Uh, hello. Let's talk about some stuff. All right. So first of all, before we kick off. Uh, a lot of you have been asking my bit Morbius thoughts. We're going to talk Morbius in this video. We are going to talk the insanity of Crisis on Infinite Earths, which is going to be spoiler-filled, but later we're going to get to that. I'll give you lots of spoiler warnings. And someone said Koi's mom curls. You're goddamn right. She's a beast. She does yoga. She gets them gains. Um, also, we're going to talk about the Oscar noms, which I have apparently differing feelings on than a lot of people. And we are going to talk about the new Black Widow footage, because holy crap, that footage. Now, let's kick it off with Morbius. Morbius... I got notes. I got notes. Uh, Morbius is, I believe, the beginning of something crazy. After that Morbius footage, uh, Brian NG, I hope she doesn't hold the camera for an hour. I wish there was another solution. What if we, like, made a stack of stuff and help? I don't know. Um, this is the out. least professional I have ever been. That's not true. Uh, so, Morbius. I think this is the beginning of the Sinister Six. I think the end of this spoiler alert for the end of the trailer, I'm about to say, if you haven't seen the trailer, pause this video, you're on YouTube already, just go over and watch the trailer, is Michael Keaton gathering the Sinister Six. So I think Morbius is going to be one of the very essential uh, pieces for that madness. I do think Morbius is relatively in the MCU live chat because... Spider-Man's in this. Uh, now, MCU is relative, right? Because the Vulture is in the MCU, and Spider-Man obviously is in the MCU. Spider-Man is in an image in the Morbius trailer. Weirdly, they chose a video game shot, I think, that looked like the Spider-Man suit from Sam Raimi, but in the video game. Bold choice. Uh, all around. Weird. But Vulture being in this, to me, I see this shaping into tying into a Sony Sinister Six movie. Now, Sony has the rights to a Sinister Six script. They have the rights to all the Spider-Man stuff. They let Marvel use the character when they want, but... I do think this is the beginning of assembling that. Now, if you remember Spider-Man Homecoming, we already have, technically, Scorpion, Tinkerer, Shocker, Vulture, and Prowler teased and Chameleon teased, in my opinion, from uh, Far From Home and obviously Mysterio. We already have seven villains. With Morbius, we have eight. So... If they use Prowler, we have eight. That is easily a Sinister Six movie. I've always said you need to meet the villains first. I have always said that the way to do this is to do basically an Ocean's Eleven kind of film and have the villains be the guys that are down in their luck, that are trying to figure out their stuff. We already had with Venom basically a anti-hero, effectively. Like, Venom was our guy. Venom was the person that was leading the charge, right? So uh, Venom was going to be the beginning of something, and then I think the mess with Spider-Man and Venom all changed around. Also, my sister, equally a saint, solved the problem, or is solving the problem, and is getting a tripod set up. Mom, how was that? Was that doable? doable. My mom's the best. Um, so, guys, this is why I need a studio. Remember when I had a show with a studio? Um, so basically, oh, yes. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna hand this off. I'm gonna hand this off, and we're gonna get some footage going. What up, ceiling? Uh, can this go? Boom. Oh, no, Mayday. Mayday. All right, guys. Remember when I was professional? Remember those days? All right, let's get that in there, and then I'll get this plugged in there. And now we will... See, I could have cut, but I thought, no, let's not cut. Can you guys all still hear me? If you can still hear me, chime in on uh, on the live chat. Do I need uh, to switch it so it's not forward? Yeah, it'd be amazing. Come Someone on. just said uh, Craven for Sinister Six. No, I think Craven's the Spider-Man 3 villain. I think Sinister Six is going to be a solo it. movie. Uh, I think Sinister Six is going to be its own thing. You guys are a little... My family is the absolute best, you guys. They're the absolute best. Uh, yes, you can still hear me. Thank you. Excellent news. That's perfect. Uh, I just need to get me a little down because it is, it is here. 
Okay, it's gonna when I have a studio again and we look back at these days of me filming <laughs> with my family literally adjusting stuff for me. Um, hello and welcome to Koi Cube, where everything's made up and the points don't matter. That's right, the points are like you know that show. Okay, Too so high. uh we already have effectively eight villains. Too low. What are you what, what is happening? I'm oh, you can't see. To... Mom's directing you very like Yeah, very poorly. <laughs> Guys, I hope this is entertaining and not just embarrassing. Oh, that's uh, heavy. Yeah. Oh, 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 no, oh, 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 Morbius. The tone of... Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Come on. Gonna I guess trust. I can keep talking because I can't even help from over here. Okay, <laughs> so I think the tone of Morbius is going to be a lot like the horror madness that was going to be <laughs> uh, what the DC uh, basically... Uh, I can't, I'm so distracted by the chaos that's going on. I just said DC <laughs> when I meant to say Warner Brothers. Do you guys remember when they were trying to assemble a team of villains with... Uh... <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I can do this. <laughs> but then I'm too tall. Careful Hello. Your britches. Hi. Okay, so remember when they were trying to assemble a bunch of villains a la Frankenstein and the mummy and all of those things? Do you remember those days? So in those days, that was what I thought they were going to do with the, the Sinister Six, and I think that's exactly what's happening. If you think of Venom, that is a very, very, like, old-school horror movie. It's very, like... Um, you know, uh, Jacqueline Hyde-esque with Venom and Eddie Brock talking to each other, and Morbius looks even more Jacqueline Hyde-esque. We have an actual, uh, true horror creature with a vampire. Like, there's so much going on with that character that could tie into this element. So, since the Dark Universe fell apart with the mummy and all of that stuff, and with the Frankenstein, and they had that fantastic Russell Crowe situation, um, I think that Sony can learn from that mistake and really build up these villains and form what could be the Sinister Six by having these very strange singular films with Morbius, with Venom, and I think that's exactly what's happening. Now, there are 80 of you in the chat right now, and that makes, uh, I hope that you guys joined recently because you just missed some chaos. Anyone watching this later, I am so, so sorry. Um, I'm home for the holiday and did not intend to work, but here we are. Um, so I think Sinister Six. Now, the actual Morbius trailer itself. Morbius, to me, is a character who... Uh, he's so tied to Spider-Man, I'm really glad they're doing this. Uh, people had asked me, a lot of people wanted my thoughts on the Morbius trailer, pick up the original Spider-Man turning into the, the, the you know, multiple arm Spider-Man, the six arm Spider-Man, pick up that stuff. So I'd say go back to issue Amazing Spider-Man 101 um, and, and jump on Morbius around there because that's going to be your introduction to Michael Morbius, that's going to be a lot of the good horror. That 70s flavor of Spider-Man was very horror heavy, so jumping around right there I think would be an absolute great idea. Uh, I also think we have a good opportunity with Jared Leto, he needs a redemption movie. He's been in some great indies, he's been in some great things. I'm not going to talk about his Joker because that's very polarizing. A lot of people like it. I'm not one of them. Uh, but I do think that with this character, we can let him have a comic book foray. He can he can play with the comic book realm, but in a character that's much more like him. Because frankly, Jared Leto being 50 means he's at least knows something about vampires. It doesn't make sense. Uh, I also love that he got to do the gaunt Jared Leto and the Jack Jared Leto in one trailer. Um, what else do I like about the trailer? Um, the tone felt very Blade meets Underworld. It's definitely that neo-vampire flavor. It's definitely not your Bram Stoker. You're, you're based on the novels. This is a modernized vampire. I'd expect some new metal music from the tone of the trailer. And that's also kind of what we got about Venom. These two movies feel distinctly 90s superhero. And to me, that that is a great strength to make them different than Marvel. I think it's a really strong thing Sony's doing. I don't think it'll make the 830 million that Venom did because everyone knew Venom right away. That's a known property. Morbius is not, but I do think it'll clear like 500 because of the attachment to Spider-Man, because of its potential connections to the MCU. I can see this making between 450 and five, especially how popular vampires continue to be. Uh, my mom has a Twilight shelf with just Twilight, True Blood, and crazy vampire stuff, but I'm not going to do that to you, dear audience. So I think uh, vampires meets Spider-Man meets MCU has a lot of potential. I think throwing in Jared Leto, I think the tone of the trailer is, like I said, uh, Dark Universe potential. Also, Jared Harris and Matt Smith, man. Those cast members, plus Jared Leto, plus Michael Keaton, this cast is absolutely crazy. There's a lot of potential here. Uh, since I can't physically see the live chat, I can either ask, oh, my mom saved me. I was gonna ask my mom to be a mod. Um, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna read the live chat in between se sections. 95 of you in here, what up, 100 people. 
uh, my handle is about to get tired. We scroll back to the top. So in between sections, what I'm gonna do in the show from now on is generally do an entire story, go back through the live chat, try to catch what you guys thought about that story, segment into the next section. If you want me to guaranteed get to your question, this is a bad example of it. But generally, if you go to streamlabs.com slash Koi I'll be able to see your Streamlabs uh, if you go through Streamlabs because that's the best way that I can always see it. And I'll open the next show with your Streamlabs thing. So if you've got evergreen questions, you got any questions, open answer on Twitter, jump on Streamlabs. That is the best way to get to me. And by the time I'm back home after this uh, trip, I've got a trip here where I am and then a trip to New York for work stuff. So after all that, I'll be home. We'll get Streamlabs set up right. Long story, very long live chat. Okay, uh, let's see. Black Widow was awesome. Do I think Morbius in the MCU? I think Morbius lightly in the MCU. I might have already answered that. Prowler is in Homecoming, uh, a little bit. Uh, Childish Game, <laughs> Donald Glover is in the movie as the character Hobie Brown who becomes Prowler. He also mentions y'all got climbers, which climbers are the talons that effectively allow Prowler to be Prowler. He also talks about crime. He also talks about his nephew who is actually Miles Morales. And Miles Morales is loosely based on Childish Gambino campaigning for Spider-Man, which means Miles Morales is being played by his own uncle because Donald Glover plays himself referencing his own fictional comic book past in a Spider-Man movie while webbed to a car with his original character's original appearance, which is inspired meta-ness. So Prowler is like in Spider-Man Homecoming. Marvel, if you're watching this, note that I just went through that off the top of my head, and I would very much like to not do this in the living room. Uh, we also got, uh, let's see, comics column watching from South Korea. What up, South Korea? That's amazing. Can Flash beat Superman in a fight? I think he can beat him in a race. I don't think he can beat him in a fight, but you know how he beat him in a fight? Because Superman wouldn't let him, uh, he wouldn't hurt Flash, because because he's better than that. So I feel like Superman would let him win, in both a race and a fight. Um, <laughs> what up? What up? Uh, me after watching Christ and Earth. Yeah, now I really miss Heroes. Oh my god, Koi is streaming. That is the exact goal, Sonic Skills, and 112 of you are in here right now because there is no Heroes, which means I can stream whenever the hell I want, which means I'm covering all the news right here for you. This would have aired Tuesday night after Heroes. It would have been a week, but now it's right here. Uh, Amy's not with me. You may notice I'm on, I'm on location. I'm traveling. Uh, hey people, Merry Christmas, Koi. What up? I do think Craven. I was saying Spider-Man 3 for Craven. If you check out Collider.com, I have an article all about why I think Craven should be in Spider-Man 3. It is long. It is like 20,000 words. So there's a lot in there about Craven. I do think that's the move. Uh, let's see. Koi Lider. You're right. I, I am definitely doing Koi Lider Heroes. Uh, let's see. So would you assume that Venom is now confirmed to take place in the MCU? Yes, effectively. I think with the Sony Marvel deal when they got Spider-Man back, they were able to make a deal. So we're going to see a lot more Spider-Man in these Sony properties. I think Venom 2 is all but locked for Tom Holland Spider-Man. I think Morbius is all but locked for Tom Holland Spider-Man. I think the Michael Keaton thing was a great tease without showing the Tom Holland moment because you don't want to waste that in a trailer. So I thought it was bold to put that in the first teaser, but I do believe that we will see Tom Holland all up in these Sony movies. All right. Thank you for saying I'm audible. You can hear me. Hell yeah. Uh, we turned down the volume on my phone. I was afraid that turned down all sorts of stuff. I hope Morbius makes a billion. Might. We'll see. It's funny. I'm so glad. My sister has been doing her nails since I got here. They terrify me. Those are the nails you saw pop in front of the camera. They are that long and that terrifying. Uh, this is Us Koi Edition. I love that show. And my life is very dramatic. I'm a Randall Foe show. Man. Uh, okay. Uh, been a fan since Peter on a movie fight split. So glad to see you keep on going. Thank you so much, Jimmy Comer. Uh, keep talking like a podcast. I, I think I'm going to turn the audio of these into a podcast once I figure out how. My mom got me a microphone for Christmas because, again, she is a saint, both tripod mother and giver of microphone. She is many things and a saint. So once I get that all set up, I'm going to do the garage band route, get this up on podcasts, and also probably rip the audio from these YouTube videos in my stream of consciousness speak and get some podcasts going, and I will make that happen. Very bummed they split Morbius from Blade. Now, Morbius is a Spider-Man villain. He has interacted with Blade, but he is a Spider-Man villain. He was introduced in Amazing Spider-Man number 101, if memory serves. The character of Michael Morbius, anyway. I think Morbius first appeared as a vampire in issue 103, but I don't know off the top of my head, or do I? That Mulos might be right. Uh, let's see. This is a great angle. Thank you. We're, we're going to make it work. We're trying to do this thing here. Um, could this be how Blade will be introduced through Morbius? It could, but I doubt Kevin would want them to... Kevin Feige. We're not on a first name basis. Sorry. Kevin Feige uh, would want them to introduce a Blade-level character through a Sony film. It's not a Sony property. It's a Marvel property. So I doubt they would do that. It's possible, but even with the tone of the film feeling like Blade, I don't think they'd do that to the character. Uh, the background is extremely fitting. Shout out to Mama and Sister Koi. She just left, but thank you, my mom's right here. She <laughs> says hi, she waves. Uh, these are the movies of my childhood all around me, so it is a very fitting background. 
Uh, Koi Cast, who plays the Joker in the future Batson verse? That is, of course, Joseph Gilgun. Joseph Gilgun from Preacher is born to play the Joker. That man is intense. He is anarchic. He is a madman in, in his performances, his energy, his entire nature. He's got a darkness to him. He also has a lean lankiness. You can play the comic book Joker, which we haven't actually, in my opinion, had. So far to me, we've had Jack Nicholson, who played Jack Nicholson with makeup on. I know a lot of people like that performance. It's good, but it's Jack Nicholson, which is Joker-esque, but not the comic book. It's, it's solid, but people that think it's better than Heath are just wrong. Sorry, everyone else. Uh, Heath Ledger is, to me, the Joker, but that is an anarchic, Sex Pistols, crazy Joker. Very different thing than what I think of the Joker from the comic books as being. Jared Leto played, like, you know, the uh, East L.A. kind of Joker, very uh, gang-oriented, very very leaning into, like, a lot of those niche comic book storylines, um, and, and certainly not the comic book faces. I think Joseph Gilgan could play... Uh, a very menacing, uh, intense, sporadic, hard to discern what he's going to do next comic book Jokers. That's that's who I would cast. Um, I Travis, I'm glad you like Jared Leto's Joker. I just probably got to the point where I insulted Jared Leto's Joker. For that, I apologize, kind of. Um, let's see. Steve Carell's Doc Ock. Love that idea. Fantastic choice. It's going to be hard to talk off top Alfred Molina, but Steve Carell is a brilliant dramatic actor and the comedy chops always help in superhero properties. You've got to be able to look at a green screen and make it work. And that takes comedy chops because there's a certain element of unrealistic possibility that I think comedy actors lend themselves well to dramatically. I am talking so fast. Everyone that hates me talking fast, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to a lot of news and still have a vacation and get through a live chat. Uh, and 115 of you so far haven't left my speed talking insane show. So thank you. Uh, one of the C uh, C's in Koi Cubed is, uh, what is the C that stands for fast? I didn't prep this. Uh, cranked? No drug involvement, but cranked fast. Uh, cause that movie involves lots of drugs. Uh, Koi's mom is modding hard with the phone pass. She is killing the game. She is the mod of the year and the mom of the year. M-O-M-D, mommed of the year. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I'm not a fan of the trailer, just worried because Blade is such a big part of Morbius. I get with your perspective on Blade. I just think that, that in the comics, they didn't have to meet until down the line, but I totally see what you're saying. Uh, let's see. Your family is so sweet. You have no idea architectural foam panels and columns. They are amazing. Killing it in this mode on draft. Are you planning to have Amy over for some geeky chat? I am currently not in the state of California, so not soon. Uh, I won't be back in LA for a couple weeks. Uh, I will have Amy as soon as our schedules align. Uh, I would love to have Amy over and do some stuff. And I've actually got a couple schemes. So that is definitely an option. We are almost caught up in the live chat. And then I will get to my next news story, which is going to be Oscar goodness. And 123 of you are here, which means you are not mad at this random array of thought coming out of my mouth. Uh, let's see. Ooh, I don't want to block anything. No, no, no. Uh, Keaton cameo setting up the Sinister Six. I think that is exactly what that Keaton cameo is. If you go back a little, that's what I, uh, that's what I was speaking to. Donald Glover does play, oh, sorry. Uh, he plays Aaron Davis, not Hobie Brown. Hobie Brown is the original universe's um, Prowler. Aaron Davis is Ultimate Universe's Prowler. Apologies. Aaron Davis is the uncle of Miles Morales. That entire rant is still true. If you switch out to the name Hobie Brown and Aaron Davis, because I had the wrong universe that I was referencing. And a lot of the MCU stuff is based off the Ultimate Universe, in my opinion. So Aaron Davis is who Mr. Donald Glover is playing. Amy is always here in spirit. You're goddamn right. Uh, agreed Craven should be in Spider-Man 3. Hell yeah. What is my pull list for the week? I did my pull list for tomorrow on, uh, on another show. If you look through my, uh, videos that I've done so far, I've got a bunch of pulls on an episode. My most recent comic book episode, uh, I think it's called Comics 2020 because I went through my 101 pulls, my 108 pulls, uh, the January 1 and January 8th. Uh, wait, no, tomorrow's the 15th. What is time except a flat circle? I gotta, I will, I will figure that out and I'll tweet it out. Uh, cause I definitely don't want to add another thing to the story. Uh, let's see. Hunt down Venom and Morgan's Trophies. I totally think Craven could do that. Check out that article. Uh, okay, I'm going to get back to the next news story, and then I'm going to... Let's see, let's see. Oh, I love this. Speed talking, you snooze, you lose. I respect that. Uh, yeah, that's true. If you're watching this channel, you probably are pretty tolerant of my own brand of stuff. So I am going to finish up these live chat questions, because I appreciate you. That comment changed the whole game. Uh, once again, polls for the week, I will get back to. Uh, I got to think the MCU will reference nothing in the Sony-verse. I think the Sony-verse will reference the MCU-verse, but I don't necessarily think a lot of the MCU will reflect the Sony, and I, I don't mind that. Personally, I love the MCU Spider-Man, but I would prefer to see the Sony Spider-Man, while still played by Tom Holland, lean less into the Tony Stark of it all. I love that they, they made Tony Stark Uncle Ben. I'd like to see Uncle Ben too. Uh, I also like the Iron Man uh, legacy, but I also want Spider-Man to be friendly neighborhood. So if they lean out of MCU a little bit as they go forward with Sony, which they can now because the way the movie ended is he's finally back in New York. He's completely exposed. He's an underdog again. You can absolutely start Spider-Man from this point on and make it very Spider-Man comic based without sacrificing the MCU storyline or Sony storyline. I hope that made sense. Uh, I'm jealous of all your books and movies. I have been getting books and movies for Christmases and birthdays since I could read. Um, 
and my family's amazing as per all the things they've done in the last 20 minutes alone. All right. What is my dream MCU Sony Sinister Six members? Ooh, Jesus. Uh, Chameleon, because they kind of introduced him in, in Far From Home, and I think that'd be really cool because he was the first major Spider-Man villain. We haven't seen him on screen yet. Mysterio, because Mysterio was an incredible villain. Uh, Far From Home's not one of my, not, isn't my favorite Spider-Man movie, but Mysterio is incredibly played by Jake Gyllenhaal, and I think he has a lot of potential for the future. Um, Vulture, because I think he's one of the best MCU or Spider-Man villain translations, period. Um... I want to see Venom, even though Venom's only canon in John Romita Jr. drawn Sinister Six iterations that weren't introduced until the 2000s. Because uh, I want to see Tom Hardy. A Goblin. I know we've had a lot of Goblins, but I, I think the Sinister Six needs a Goblin and Doc Ock. That's, that's my dream. Uh, that doesn't include a lot of the characters we already have, and I do think a lot of these characters will be in the Sinister Six, but that is my dream because that is the question you asked. Uh, hope all is well. Favorite superhero emblem logo? Jesus. Uh, either Deadpool's iconic mask with swords behind them, because that's such an iconic imagery. And if you look up iconic Deadpool over on Skybound, you'll find a video where I talk about that very thing. Or um, Green Lantern's ring, because I think that has a lot of power to it. Superman is the is the easy answer, because, I mean, goddamn it, Superman. And Batman is the most licensed iconography. Like, he puts that thing on everything. Batman is the least sneaky superhero ever. He brands his stuff like McDonald's. Uh, also, I have a video about the iconicness of Batman symbol over on Skybound on Geek Gamma Ray on YouTube, and you can hear all about my Batman symbol love. Uh, let's see. Hey, amazing job. Love from India. Thank you very much. Oh, I caught up. Hell yeah. This Morbius trailer looks fantastic. Thank you very much. Time is a social contract. I'm in February. Birds of Prey was good. The Patriots lost. Hey, you know what? Birds of Prey was good, and the Patriots losing hurts me. The Birds of Prey trailer is fantastic. Again, thank you, Starbug40, for the uh, love of speed talk. Koi for Blur in the Transformers reboot. Hell yeah. Mattel, if you're watching, what up? I got your voiceover right here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Amazing job, love from India. Much obliged. Blessing that the show would go on when Collider Matrix the shows. I was so happy that you and the others start up your own shows. Much love. Keep up the good work and safe travels. Thank you, Scott Prater. And the last three comments before I carry on. How do I explain Spider-Man's suit and Michael Keaton's gear in the Sony movies? Their suits are tied to MCU storylines. Well, they've already got the clothes. So they're explained. You don't need to have them go away if they continue on the movies. Like, Spider-Man's not gonna be like... Where'd this come from? Uh, I think he just has a suit, and Vulture will have already had the suit. I'm not saying everything's going to be erased or negated. I'm not saying they're going to ignore the movies uh, in that sense. I think they're going to ignore the storyline elements. I think that Sony can continue on and use the MCU stuff because they own Spider-Man. Uh, so I, I don't see that as a problem. I uh, want a Dark Avengers with Norman Osborn in the MCU. Absolutely, and Norman Osborn should be played by either Tom Hanks or Leonardo DiCaprio because if one of those goes rogue, you're very surprised. We've seen incredible, incredible performances by Leo in that kind of role. I think Tom Hanks is waiting to play a villain. I think he'd kill it. If a Schmodown category was comic books, would anyone beat you? If it was comic books and not comic book movies, they'd probably still beat me because I'm so bad under pressure. I'm very good at the movie fights type thing where I can like look at the question, go like, this is my answer and I can argue it. But rapid retention, like numbers uh, and stuff under pressure, those lights, man, I'm not good at that game. That's why I'm a manager and that's why I love managing because I love the game, but hate me playing it. What up, Colt Badeau? Uh, was the Goblin an Amazing Spider-Man Hobgoblin? Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, they used Green Goblins. They kind of made Dane DeHaan Hobgoblin, but mm, I, I, Code 8 was great, right? My boys and Mel, uh, they're fantastic. Check out the interview I did with them. One of the last Heroes interviews we got to do. All right, 131 you watching. We are done with the first story and done with the first round of live chat. That was a lot of questions. A lot of you had some good stuff. Thank you, as ever. Let's get into the Oscars. Now, the Oscars 2020 nominations were just released either this morning or yesterday morning. I'm not sure. I got on a plane and that means I don't know when or who I am, but they were recently released. Oscar noms, the ones I'm pulling for, not necessarily the ones I think are going to win. I'm going to go through just like the eight categories that I had room to write down before I started on this show because uh, I ran out of room. This is literally how I prep this show when I'm impromptu on vacation. I want to talk Joaquin versus Adam Driver for actor. For me, those are the two I'm pulling for. Uh, I think Adam Driver did an incredible job in Marriage Story making a beautiful script sing. I think you felt everything for what he was going through. I think that it was a very down-to-earth, believable performance. And I think in another year, that'd be my vote. But Joaquin Phoenix's Joker was a revolution, man. It was absolutely transcendent. He, he was two different characters in that movie. Arthur Fleck and the Joker were different people. By the time you landed on that crescendo of that crazy arc he went through, that was a different man, all of which were different than Joaquin Phoenix. Like, Joaquin Phoenix in her, in The Master, in Gladiator, in most things he's done is already brilliant. But something about the Joker, the way he made me afraid, the way he made me nauseous, the way he made me upset, the way he made me feel, the way he made me judge, the way he made me concerned, the way the way that character just landed, that was the acting, man. And Joaquin, I love the idea of, if, if, if Joaquin wins the Joker, 
That means that every actor that's played the Joker has either gotten an Oscar or gotten an Oscar for the Joker. Jack Nicholson already had an Oscar. Jared Leto already had an Oscar. Heath got it for the Joker, and if Joaquin gets it for the Joker, that's a really cool legacy. That's your that's your modern day Hamlet, and that's dope. Plus, the performance is worth it, not just for the gimmick, but just for the performance alone. Uh, on the gimmick side, I love that synchronicity. Uh, on the gimmick side, the Academy could use the ratings. And on the gimmick side, I am so sick of people complaining about comic book movies not getting any love, and they're not wrong. But now that they're getting love, people are all uppity. Uh, I don't understand that, personally. This is a movie with the Joker in it. And I, I, I get it wasn't adapted from a comic, and I understand that it wasn't a Batman Joker. But this was a character that, when the last ten minutes happened, was the Joker to me. And if you disagree, that's totally cool. I understand where you're coming from. But this is a comic book movie that got 11 Academy Awards. I've tweeted some fairly snarky stuff because I'm just sick of people complaining to complain. Um, you can want one thing to win and be also bummed that things got snubbed. That's allowed. You, you can be like, oh, I wanted that too. But I think disparaging a nomination at the cost of something that you wanted is weak. Uh, so personally, I want Joaquin Phoenix for Joker to take the big acting award of the night uh, for the male category of actor. Uh, not supporting, like lead actor. All right, next up we got... Let's go with actress. Let's go Charlize, Renee, Cynthia, Arrivo, Scarjo, and Cherche Ronan for actress. You may notice I read all five names. I loved all five of these performances. Any one of these, the actors too, but like those are my big two. The, all five of these performances by all these actors, actresses were absolutely incredible. Charlize Theron completely transformed in Bombshell. It was insane what she was able to do. Her walk, her talk, her movements, the way you felt for this character. And I won't speak to Fox News because I'm gonna try not to get political too much on this channel, but, uh, man, she made me feel for a person I never felt for before. That's for sure. Never cared about that human. And she made me. Uh, Renee Zellweger, I love her portrayal of Judy. Uh, it was moving and interesting. You learn more about a very iconic character. She transformed into her. Once again, that's a, that's a powerful thing. A lot like Charlize's role. Uh, Renee Zellweger, also, I'm a, I'm a fan of in general, so I'm, I'm happy to see her back in this kind of role. Uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Arrivo, I'm not sure that that's how you say her last yeah. name, but was Harriet Tubman. Like, the physicality of the fights meeting, the strength of the character meeting, the importance of the story, and I didn't know this actress beforehand, so that, that means I was completely, like, blown away by the newness of her uh, to me, and I just, like, she was Harriet, and I was so impressed, and you, to lead a movie like that, that is, that is a performance. Uh, ScarJo, for lead role in Marriage Story, mirroring the, uh, the Adam Driver, it, it, that movie could have easily been every theater production or every acting class because that the writing allows for that. Like, And that's not to disparage the writing. We'll see later. But I really think that she did really incredible work. And I think that we cared about two people that we just met and were so distraught about them the entire time. And that was completely a performance, uh, obviously, with writing and directing stuff too. But the performances had to be so strong. So I love ScarJo in that. And Cherche Ronan... Uh, I liked Little Women, but I love Shea Shea Ronan's performance in this movie. She carried a very strong ensemble cast, and that is saying a lot. This movie had Emma Watson in it. This movie had Laura Dern in it. This movie had so many incredible actresses, and somehow Shea Shea was still like, what? So I was so impressed. Uh, so I, I, out of these, I'm going to go with Shea Shea out of, out of the five. Uh, but I, if, any five of the, if any of the five win, I'm all about it. Uh, all right, next up, let's go to Best Picture. I wrote down. 1917, Ford versus Ferrari, Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Parasite, Little Women, Jojo Rabbit, and Marriage Story. That's right. You may notice only one thing is missing, a movie that I did not enjoy and I really wanted to. Uh, you guys always talk about how I like everything. There's a movie missing from that list. I did not enjoy it. Um, it was really long and it was at points silly when it shouldn't have been and it told a very important story, a very great story, it had a lot of great actors in it, but the movie never caught me and that's just my shit, man. I'm talking about my votes. If you love that movie, good on ya. You had a different three hours than I did. If you love that movie, I'm really happy because I'd rather spend three hours enjoying something than not, so you win. But uh, personally, wasn't for me, so I'd like any of the other ones to win personally. Uh, also, we got 1917. That is a movie that is effectively six perfect shots. That movie is shot to be one, I saw six edits. I don't know if that's the actual number because uh, I, I haven't looked into it as nearly as much as I should because it's not Oscar time yet. But there are six edits that I caught and that means, holy crap, six shots? That movie is an experience. It's a roller coaster. It's a thrill ride. It's full crazy. And the performances are all incredible, but they're, they're long performances. And the movie itself takes you on a journey that I've never been on. And I've seen a lot of war movies. And I think the World War I setting was really powerful for the story it told. And I really, if you haven't seen it yet, it's a theatrical experience through and through. Please do check that out. Uh, Ford versus Ferrari is 
probably my number two pick. 1917 is probably my number three pick. Ford versus Ferrari from the first frame, I was like, oh, I'm at cinema. Like, I'm, I'm having a cinematic experience. This is, this is a full-blown movie. The grit of the film, the flavor of the film, the performances in the film. James Mangold is one of the great American modern directors, and he made a hell of a time out of this movie. I love the story. Uh, I got to go to the premiere, so I'm a little biased because the entire time I was in the freaking screening, I was in an IMAX screening of Ford Ferrari with the cast and crew just, like, enthralled. So maybe, no, it's still just as good. I've seen it a second time. It's brilliant. The performances, like, Christian Bale and Matt Damon do so much great work, and John Bernthal just slays every scene he's in. And the kid, man, uh, Noah Jupe, I believe is his name. Noah Jupe is in that in Honey Boy. So Noah Jupe is in two of my top ten movies of the year. Good on you, Noah Jupe. I just, I met him. Kid's great. Real chill. Real, like... If I was that talented, I wouldn't be chill. Tell you what, I'd be a dick. Um, so Noah Jupe, fantastic. And uh, I'm, I'm really a fan of everyone in that film, and I'm really a fan of how it landed and, and how much I felt during it. Um, I would say Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I like the writing and I like the performances. Probably not Best Picture for me. That's just me. Uh, Little Women, similar. Um, I really got a lot out of it. I really felt a lot, and I really I liked the experience. Uh, Jojo Rabbit, Marriage Story, uh, you know, actually, I'm gonna give Ford Ferrari my number one pick. I'm gonna go back to Ford Ferrari. I think Ford Ferrari is my number one pick for picture. I, if Joker wins, not mad at it. Like, Joker can win, but I do think there are some weak points in Joker that Ford Ferrari doesn't share. So, I'm gonna say, you know, between the two, I, I'm probably, I'm happy if 1917, Ford Ferrari, Joker, any of those wins, but for me, I'm pulling for Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, I saw a lot of high, highs in the chat. My mom is also Ford Ferrari. That is her vote. And I love Joker, obviously. I'm going to be defending its 11 noms and get myself some criticism on the internet. Uh, so I, 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 by the way, that's a good point. I support all 11 nominations. I don't think it should necessarily win all 11, but I think all 11 nominations were deserved. So time will tell. But I, I think Ford Ferrari, man, that movie just rocked me. Um, and you know, what's funny is my number one movie of the year was Honey Boy. My number two movie of the year was Joker. My number three movie of the year was Endgame. I think four was Ford Ferrari, but that's still my best picture. And that's because my brain works weird. I can have a favorite movie and I can have a favorite experience without it being what I think is best picture because I think that like, I love SWAT, man. And I love, I think Rango is better than most Pixar movies. So many people hate Rango and that's their take. And I don't think, I don't think Rango is better to some people, but like for me, Rango is always a good time. Anyway, that's another whole episode. We can talk about taste and format and style and how every single experience you have in your life impacts your opinion on movies because you could be seeing a great movie, but you could have just stepped in a puddle. Your foot's wet. It's cold. You're mad because your foot's wet. You don't have the same experience. That it, like changes the other person's experience. It's all subjective, and that is a longer, weirder conversation because we're running out of time. All right, next up, we got supporting actor. I wrote down just two names for those I got. Sorry, Ben Bateman just commented on my Instagram and I just saw Ben Bateman's face and it was very alarming because I thought Ben Bateman was somehow hacking into this and I was very impressed. Hello, goes to Ben Bateman past. Uh, I got, let's see, Brad Pitt and Tom Hanks for supporting actor. For me, Brad Pitt, whenever he was on screen, I was distracted from the rest of the movie in a good way. I loved the movie. I liked the performances, a lot of them. But like Leonardo DiCaprio is always incredible. It's Leonardo DiCaprio. But Brad Pitt made me like, but what about his stunt guy? And that's, that's crazy when you're, like, asking about his his guy. So, for me, Brad Pitt. No, my, I don't even like Brad Pitt. My little sister doesn't even like Brad Pitt, and she's all in. And at this point, guys, we've had a reckless, insane, abandon of shows. We're going to have some color commentary. My little sister agrees. Brad Pitt. My mom agrees. Ford Ferrari. We've got the John Drew family Oscar season going on here. <laughs> uh, so, I went full host voice for a second there. We've got the... Uh, so, Brad Pitt, for me, stole the show in a very dense movie, in a very actor-heavy movie, in a very... Um, Tarantino movie. Uh, so I was really impressed with what Brad Pitt was able to do. And I was really impressed with the, the charisma that man always has. Like from, from the mid nineties to now, he's, he's one of the last movie stars and it shows every time he's on screen. So best supporting for there. Uh, my other one is Tom Hanks because Tom Hanks, good God, did I weep? Uh, man, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I, I cried in three movies more than twice this year and that does not happen much either either therapy's working or i'm getting more sensitive as i get older or the world's darker and i'm just closer to cracking but multiple cries in honey boy waves and a beautiful day in the neighborhood those three movies got me now a beautiful day in the neighborhood is not about mr rogers in the direct documentary sense because we already had a documentary about mr rogers it is a movie that is about a man coming to terms with him and his father and him and his family and him and his life and mr rogers is the beautiful angel person he is and helps him. So it's a really cool story about Mr. Rogers. It's based on a true story, based on an article. And I mean, if you don't think Tom Hanks is already Mr. Rogers, we know a very different Tom Hanks. The man's name is Thanks. Guys. 
So, uh, Mr. Rogers, uh, is, is such a figure in our pop culture. And then to show like the, 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 the full fleshed version of him through Tom Hanks, that movie just rocked me. And that was through his performance. So for me, Tom Hanks and Brad Pitt are right there. Uh, I would say, Ooh, I can't pick between those two. Um, they're both so powerful and very important. Uh, we're about halfway through my Oscar stuff. And I realize if I keep going, we're going to have a hell of a time in, uh, in the live chat. So I'm gonna scroll back a little bit. Cause I see a lot of Nope and Angry's guys. I didn't like the movie you're saying with Joe Pesci in it. That was the one I wasn't saying the name of. Uh, cause I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't for me. That's okay. Not everything's for me. Just like not everything's for you. Some people don't like stuff. All right. Scrolling back, scrolling back, scrolling back. Also everyone, welcome to the Polk Koi Pond. I love that so much. Y'all are delightful. All right. Let's see, let's see. Appreciate you going across the board at Hearing House Comic Nerds and also us movie nerds. Always appreciate your work. Thank you, Jimmy Comer, again in the live chat. Uh, made a beautiful script sing. I see what you did there, even though Adam Driver himself never will. That's right, Sahil. I had some in-movie reference puns doing the damn thing. Uh, we're scrolling back up more because message retracted. Did someone yell at me? Oh, no, you probably just mistyped uh because it didn't say deleted uh the pumpkin bobs asap dude i would love to see a full-on goblin but we need the osborns first and when we have the osborns then you care about when they become goblins if they're just goblins you're not invested in the story and the character that's what these movies keep rushing harry is best friends with peter and his dad is norman who peter admires so when the betrayal of the green goblin happens it's because it's like losing a father figure that Peter spent his entire life searching for because Uncle Ben died. You can lean into that with frickin' Robert Downey Jr. dying. Make him want a new scientific genius mentor. It writes itself. Robert Downey Jr. is dead. Norman Osborn, new genius, playboy, th philanthropist, swoops in, takes Peter under his wing. You were invested in Norman Osborn. He's played, of course, by Tom Hanks for Leonardo DiCaprio. And his son, played by... Who would be a good Harry Osborn right now? I don't know. I'm busy with trying Zac to get Efron. through the... Uh, Zac Efron's Human Torch. It's a great idea. But Zac Efron's He's way Human too Torch. old. He's also too handsome. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I will think of a Harry Osborn, but you see what I'm saying. And then you have the opportunity to feel that betrayal, to feel where that goes. There's so much to do there. Uh, so personally, I would love to see the goblins back. Uh, let's see. Late, but I'm here. Token Trinidad... Trinidad... Tr how do you say Trinidadian? Trina Trinidadian? Thank you for watching from Trinidad. That's incredible. I love the world wide reach of you two. I'm so, like, there are people chiming in. By the time I get to the scroll, it's going to be way later. But let me know where you're from. I love hearing where you guys are all from in the internet. We have 160 people in here. Is that annoying when you rewatch this later? Because I'm excited by the number. I'm going to say it anyway. I'm excited by the number. All right. Also, like, subscribe, and all the YouTube things I'm supposed to say. Because it helps me do this for you. PBS. Uh, let's see. Do you have any theories on why Tom Holland Spider-Man shown in the Morbius trailer? I think he's going to be in it. I think that's why they showed the Spider-Man. Um, I think the Sony universe and MCU are going to be touching, but not connected. If that makes sense. Uh, Sam Rockwell is Justin Hammer's Iron Patriot though. You're goddamn right. Architectural film panels and columns. Give me more Sam Rockwell any day of the week. Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe not as Iron Patriot though. Cause we already had Iron Patriot as kind of a good guy that got taken over by a bad guy. I don't know. Okay. Let's, 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 let's. Speaking of Shmoe Dunkle, he's the most balanced overall team in my opinion. Thank you, Randall Tan. I worked day and night on that draft. I am very proud of it. Those nine and 10 spots have some ideas, but they're gonna be held open for a reason. I am really proud of my team. I've already talked with them. I'm very excited to work with them. They're delightful. Uh, the Hobgoblin episode of the 90s Spider-Man is my first intro to the Spider-Man character and so hard having a fave villain be so unpopular. Dude, Hobgoblin is a very popular villain in the right circles. Uh, in, in like comic book circles, I feel like he's revered. So I think that you just gotta find your Hobgoblin people. They're out there. Um, hate that Rocket Man didn't get love. I, dude, uh, I liked Rocket Man. I think a big problem with Rocket Man was that last year, a movie that didn't deserve Best Picture won. Hot take. Not that hot. It's a very common take. It's just not, it's just sad. Because the, the, the freaking the movie that came out this last year was way better than the other biopic about a guy lip syncing with Faith Keegan. I don't even, I'm not even good at talking shit. I just mumbled fake teeth then because I don't want to say something negative because Freddie Mercury is incredible. I just didn't think that movie was. Anyway, scrolling back up, scrolling back up. Here I go, scrolling back up. That's the song about me not being good at live is chats. Is that just swimming? This is just keep swimming, but through the live chat. In your Just football? keep scrolling, just keep scrolling. Lots of Oscar commentary. All right. Um, I'm curious to see Keanu's take on Norman Osborn. I want Keanu Reeves to be the great silver surfer. Keanu Reeves' is, uh, very mellow tone, his knowing of kung fu, his surfing through point break, his mellowness, his being Neo the One. That, to me, is silver surfer. I think he's a little too chill for Norman. Even John Wick, he's a cold, calculated assassin. I want to see Norman uh, be able to lose his shit. I think Norman needs to be a volatile volcano, whereas I feel like Keanu Reeves is a glacier coming to get you slowly. 
Um, do you have any theories why? To oh, I did that one. Okay, we got speaking of spoiling coins, but that's okay. Okay, here we are. Uh, Joker. Woohoo! I agree. Eddie Murphy snubbed. Eddie Murphy was snubbed. You were goddamn right. Uh, I'm not gonna lean into snubs too much because there's too many movies to go into all the snubs. But Eddie Murphy should have been nominated. Dolomite in my name is real good. I'm a big fan of Dolomite, so it should have been one. Uh, I'm happy to see you still continue to think. Thank you much for continuing to support so much you love. Plus, you keep up in the latest comic books. I will absolutely keep you up in the latest comic books, 100%. I will even try to get out something about uh, comics this week. Maybe check out my Instagram. I usually post stuff over there. Um, let's see. The scene when he's on the car hook is chills. I agree. Appreciate you going to report. Agree. That is a DVD collection. You're right. This is my childhood right here. You guys don't even know. Uh, this is perfect, right? That's a third. It is a third, right? That's why I'm not saying where I am. This is only a third. All right, uh, Renee's pretty much a shoe in I agree, she was great. Uh, da, 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 da. The Art of Self-Defense. Uh, I have not seen that yet, but I've heard it's incredible. I will check that out. People are always going to complain for the sake of complaining. While the Joker movie wasn't my cup of tea, I'm very happy it's getting the love. Thank you, nerdy by nature. You live up to your name. You're goddamn right. Thank you. That really, that means a lot. Um, did I know Harriet Tubman? I did not know Harriet Tubman. I see what you're trying to say, but uh, I didn't know Harriet Tubman. I know the legacy of the importance of Harriet Tubman, and I don't appreciate your sass. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, Adam Driver is going to get an Oscar in two to three years. He's fine. That's certainly true. Uh, I have still not had a chance to watch Runaway Season 3. I've been traveling. Uh, what other villains do you think would make for good standalone movies? Uh, Craven could. You could do the most dangerous game very easily. Um, I think that... Oh, that's a hard question. Norman Osborn could. I'd love to see a full-on Norman Osborn movie. Give him the time to become the Green Goblin. Um, let's stick with those two for now. Uh, any others? Any others? Any others? I'm excited we're going to get Shriek in the Venom 2, but I don't think she deserves her movie, but I'm, I'm excited for Shriek. Uh, yeah, uh, let's leave it there for now because we are we are deep into it. Uh, I see you all yelling about Irishman. I see it. No, I'm acknowledging it. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is a rumor about Norman Osborn playing uh, Tony Revolori's father as Flash. Sure is a rumor. Uh, okay, we're going to get to the stuff for Crisis on Infinite Earths a little later after the Oscar stuff. Uh, JB is good in everything. Jojo Rabbit is number one. Excellent. Hi, Koi. Hello. John Bernthal is in this movie. Oh, I got to see Thoughts on Peter Butter Falcon. Love Peanut Butter Falcon. It is incredible. Welcome to the Koi Pond. What up, Edward? Thank you as ever for all your help. Mr. Haskell, you were a champion. Uh, Ford vs. Ferrari is not going to win, bro. These aren't the movies I think are going to win. These are the movies I want to win. These are my opinions. Uh, so I agree, Spider Dark. I, I don't think it's going to win, but that is what I want to win. So these are all my dreams. Uh, let's see. I didn't like The Lighthouse as much as a lot of people. I, 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 I'm glad I got cinematography. I wrote it down for cinematography, but the art... That movie is such an art house film that it's like when you look at a painting and everyone else adores it and you're like, why don't I understand? So I definitely went through that movie going like, but why doesn't it work for me? Um, which is also my apparently Willem Dafoe is Green Goblin impression I just did there. Why? Um, it just didn't land. I'm something of a scientist myself. Uh, it's a Willem Dafoe reference. It's on the internet. Uh, are we at half speed SGA movie fight speed round? We are at three quarter speed, I think, movie fight speed round because there is so much news. Rango shout out. Goddamn right. You guys will notice I talk about Rango way more than anyone else on the internet. Uh, the Lighthouse was crazy good, but it was horror, so not a surprise. I agree. That is part of it. And I also don't like horror. Maybe that's why I didn't get into it. Maybe that's why the art didn't land for me. Brad Pitt is a lock. Totally agree. Ben Bateman is a Russian hacker confirmed. You heard it here first, folks. When the schmodown goes in and things get hacked, it's Ben Bateman. Um, true horror getting looked down on screwed Lapita out of her deserved best actress. I think Lapita was incredible in us. I absolutely am with you there. Um, I'm not even a horror fan. I think she was great in us. So I, I agree. Horror is a tricky thing for the Academy to notice and that will change as genre content, like comic book movies gets more popular. So too will horror and sci-fi. We're getting there with Ex Machina and stuff. Um, but we're, we're getting there. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. Staging looks great. Thank you very much. I, I agree. Thank you. Um, Brad Pitt was Brad Pitt. Joe Pesci deserves the award. Brad Pitt being Brad Pitt is so much more interesting than Joe Pesci being, being a, a cranky old woman. Um, yeah, that was pretty restrained yet powerful performance. I totally agree. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I want Pacino to win. Pac if anyone was just playing themselves, it was Pacino. If you think Brad Pitt was just playing Brad Pitt, literally Al Pacino was just calmly not yelling. Bah! Like, like, I disagree. Uh, let's see. Yo, cried every five minutes. It's a beautiful day. Right? Dude, architectural. We're on the same page today. A lot of, lot of them tears. Uh, Willem Dafoe, best supporting actor in Simon Close. Even though I didn't like the movie that much, I agree the performances by them two were incredible. I just, uh, I, man, Brad Pitt, something about, like, it made me remember all of the Brad Pitt culmination of Pitt. Like, it was, I love Fight Club. I love Seven. I love Benjamin Button. I love, like, there's so much Brad Pittness. So this movie was like, remember. So maybe it's a legacy feeling, but I definitely am a fan of, uh, of the Pitt performance. And I, and I get that. Um, Koi Pond, what up? Give us, uh, give us the Mr. Dress Up with Casey and Finnegan documentary in a heartbeat, man. I'd watch the hell out of that. Haven't seen Mr. Rogers yet. When I saw the documentary in theaters, I cried at two elderly British ladies in a theater. I was something. 
totally feel you, man. I saw that movie with like seven people and I was the only one crying. It was audible. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do we need goblins at all? Because goblins are Ivan Soto. Uh, what up, Ivan Soto? I think we've seen each other on the internet before. Uh, because the goblins are probably the most important legacy villains in all of Spider-Man. They like Norman Osborn finds out he's Peter Parker and haunts him both as the goblin and as Osborn. Harry Osborn's his best friend. He's one of the only villains that is affecting both Peter and Spider-Man, and that is the power and responsibility of Spider-Man. That's the importance of Spider-Man. Venom does that as well, but since they've introduced Venom as separate of Peter Parker, it's tricky to do that retroactively. You can do that with Norman and Harry. I think the Osborns are very important, even though they've done them a lot. Uh, most of your faves are not for me either. I did like Ford vs. Ferrari. King's Port, Kings Port Cal, totally get it. Different tastes, different strokes, different folks. Uh, T. Hank's nice. Never heard of that before. It makes so much sense. Koi Pond 2020 phone. Uh, if I'm the first person to show you, thanks. I am very honored. Uh, let's see. Opportunity was great and deserves the nom, but not the win. Sorry, but Joe is badass. Spider Dark, I get you. I feel you. I, I can agree to disagree, and I agree that Al Pacino was great, but not for me. Uh, Timothy Chalamet as Harry Osborne. Oh, Timmy Clementine. Oh, that's good. Oh, if Leo DiCaprio is Norman Osborne and Timmy Clementine... My friends call him Timmy Clementine. There's no reason for it. Uh, is Harry? That is brilliant. You guys know Timothy Chalamet? He's in Little Women. He's yep. in yeah. God, he's gorgeous. He's so stupid, good looking. I know. It's like it's all the girls are in love with the Call Me by Your Name kid. Yep. Yeah, he's our modern Zac Efron, but I still think Zac has Human Torch. That totally plays. If they need Harry to be stupid handsome, dude, great call. Timmy Clementine, king of being handsome. Wait, aren't him and uh. Tom, like the same height too. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's perfect. It's totally great. Uh, yeah, Lucas Hedges is Harry. Ooh, Lucas Hedges is also good. If they're not, if they're not trying to be like sweep Mary Jane off her feet, Lucas Hedges is one of the best actors working, and he's he's not unattractive. He's just not like I'm carved from stone. Uh, Lucas Hedges is a great call as well, and he's also in hella movies I love. Lucas Hedges also in Honey Boy. Uh, what do you guys think? Should I do a couple more live chat and then go back to the news? Uh, let's see, let's see. He he he. Don't know where I got there. Um. <laughs> I can see that. Thank you, damn it. Da, da, da. Dislikes. Why are there dislikes? I've done nothing wrong. Are these people that loved Irishmen? Um, also, I was defending Martin Scorsese for a while, and then he just kept piling it on, and I ran out of defense. Uh, all right. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to leave this at uh, where we get to uh, the places that you guys are from, because that feels like a good spot. I am not as big a Miles Teller fan as many. I'm going to go Timmy Clementine or the great Lucas Hedges. Koi Pond barely moved in that film. Uh... I would not be mad if Dane DeHaan is Harry again. Man, I miss, I miss that area, Dane DeHaan. Okay, we're going to go back to locations after we get back to more news. We are at 178 people in the game. It's a game now. It's not a chat. All right, we got Best Supporting Actress. We've done Supporting Actor. We are going with, for me, there are four out of five. Ooh, who did I accidentally insult? Uh, let's see. I got Laura Dern, who was a powerhouse in Little Women. Good God. Laura Dern had two brilliant movies this year, uh, Marriage Story and... Little Women, and both of which she absolutely slayed, and they're such different performances. She was so almost vile. She was vile in Marriage Story. Like, she was doing what she had to do. She was playing a lawyer, but she was playing a lawyer. And then in Marriage Story, she was the most maternal, all-encompassing, brilliant leader of women, and holy crap, what a year for Laura Dern. As, as someone who's loved her since Jurassic Park with the rest of America, it was great to see her play a very not Jurassic Park role. Um, times two. Laura Dern has maybe MVP of the year with those two performances. She was brilliant. Uh, Scar jo for supporting in Jojo Rabbit. If you haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, Scar Jo's doing some work here, man. She does some excellent work. She Her accent plays. Uh, she's so quirky and fun. She's like the modern-day manic pixie dream girl, but back in the 40s. And it makes sense if you've seen the movie. She's got, like, that kind of flavor and energy. Uh, also, like, the way she is a mother is really interesting because she's so young and vibrant and maternal all at once. And the way, like, my mom was young when she had me, so I've always, like, really respected young mothers uh, because I'm biased. And uh, Scar jo really, like, played the young mom that was so, like, nurturing incredibly well. Uh, Margot Robbie in uh, the, the, the powerful bombshell. I really liked her. Uh, I really thought she did a very tricky job walking the fine line between, like, I've made this decision. How do I get there? You felt you, she was your eye line in a very tricky movie, and that's a hard role to play. And then uh, I've got Florence Pugh, also from Little Women, and Florence Pugh hasn't had nearly enough. Uh, I feel like talk this season for all the work she's done. I'm very excited to see her Black Widow, but Florence Pugh was really good in a very tricky role in Little Women. Out of these, since she's my MVP of the year, I'm gonna give it to Laura Dern. 
Yeah, Lord of the Rings is great. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to best animated film. I only wrote down two. Those two are How to Train Your Dragon 3, Toy Story 4. Both movies, very moving. Both movies for A's for me. Only one of those movies even comes close. And I love Toy Story 4. But How to Train Your Dragon 3 landed the trilogy. That trilogy is perfect. If you've never seen a How to Train Your Dragon movies, cancel your plan. Spend six hours, change your life. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon is one of the most important fantasy stories of all time. I am not a much of a fantasy genre guy. I like Lord of the Rings. Don't love them. Didn't really watch Game of Thrones. Goodbye, subscribers. It was a pleasure. Um, but fantasy for me, it, it's hard to catch for me because I think it's because I'm such a comic book guy and it's, it's fantasy is as all-encompassing as comic books. So it's like my brain. It's like with anime and manga. Manga and anime are so close to comic books and I respect them and I understand why people love them and I totally get it. But it's like my brain is like, but there's that much more content and it just shorts. Uh, and I think fantasy is like that. I'm like, there's something like comics, but it's not, com no, um, so I can't. Uh, but for me, How to Train Your Dragon is about family and it's about dragons and it's about an incredible character that goes through so much and keeps optimistic. And if you don't understand why that resonates for me, like I'm, I'm Mr. Optimism, man. Uh, so the character of, of Toothless is one of the greatest animation marvels of all time. All of the dragons are brilliant. Uh, and Hiccup, man, uh, Jay Barakel, um... First of all, what up, Jay Barakel? A true ride or die sweaty, a lover of Punisher, a absolute nerd, and uh, and great guy. Uh, really made Hiccup special, and that's hard to do in a movie full of dragons. You care about dragons, you don't want to know about the humans, and he does it. Um, and the whole cast is great. So I'm I'm gonna go How to Train Your Dragon three by a decent margin, as much as I love Toy Story four. How to Train Your Dragon for me. Uh, all right, score. I only wrote down two. I think there were a bunch. Uh, Joker. The scene in the bathroom alone, man. And you'll notice there were 11 Joker nominations. I haven't written it down for everyone. So everyone that thinks I'm biased towards comic movies, I'm not. The only thing I think I've voted Joker for yet is best performance by an actor. Uh, and this is the second award I want to win for me. Score. Um, dude, the scene in the bathroom alone is the best score of the year. I broke. Uh, my next choice was 1917 because it's a, it's a freaking stage play. The, all of 1917 is a giant theater production, but it's on a sound stage instead of a stage stage. And that whole thing is moved by music. All of the lines and dialogue feed beautifully synchronistic syn with synchronicity, with synchronicity into the next scene and the overlap fades tie into the musicality of the scene and the emotions tie back into the musicality. And there's just so much to it, but the Joker did that too. And the Joker did that in a way that felt like it was both hugging me and punching me simultaneously. I felt like it was like, Gah! and I was jarring. And the, the whole movie was jarring, I think largely because of the score. I think the musicality of the character of the Joker is not something I ever would have expected. He's musical in the comics in not a musical way, but he's very like theatrically big and bold. So the character, I just never thought of as being that dancey, even with all the Prince dancing in, in Jack Nicholson's. So when he like got confidence through dance, that just moved me and the score really built to that. And also the score evolved as much as the character evolved throughout the film. Uh, as you can see, I love the score of the Joker. So for me, it is score. Uh, we also got uh, best director. I got down Tarantino, Bong Joon-ho, and Sam Mendes. Uh, Tarantino, obviously for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm a bit biased. I generally live in Hollywood. I'm on vacation, but I'm always there. Uh, I love that movie because it felt like a love letter to Hollywood from a time before I ever experienced it. I love movies that make you feel authentically like you're in a place, and that movie really captured Hollywood to me. So that is directing as well as the actor's performances, which were brilliant. Uh, Tarantino is as good as he is weird about feet. So he deserves his nom. Uh, we also got Bong John Ho with The Incredible Parasite. Um, Parasite is a, a, a brilliant Korean film. I really love that it was nominated for Best Picture as well as uh, Best Foreign Film because it was one of the best pictures. It's not just a foreign film because you'll notice that foreign films are also films. Um, so I was really impressed that this got as many awards as it did in the American audience because that's a tricky thing. Uh, for whatever reason. Why? I don't know. Ask the Academy. Um, but I really appreciate No Disrespect to the Academy if you're watching. The Academy, ominous. Um, now, I do feel like um, Bong John, uh, shit, I'm so bad at names. Bong Joon Ho made a movie that I didn't necessarily like think I would love. I didn't know anything about it going in, but the hype was really high. And then I was captivated throughout because of the way he shaped the narrative, the way he shaped the performances, all the things he did. There's a cat in the chair, but he's freaking out. See that wall? That was a cat. Everywhere I film is cats. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fine, it's great. Um, thank you, Mom, for worrying. Uh, so then the final one of those is Sam Mendes. Obviously, 1917 was a directorial feat. It is a giant single-take-esque movie um, that just doesn't stop moving. The pacing is great, all of those things. So if any three of these win, I'm going to say a, a three-way tie for me. And we are going to, before we get into writing, we've got two more awards. Two more. Three more. Shit. Three more. But I'm going to get back in the live chat because <laughs> you guys are great. Math. Who needs to count? 
All right, you guys are from Shanghai, from British Columbia, Canada, from Vancouver, British Columbia, from, uh, hey, Koi, how do you do, how do you work out when you're on vacation? Great question for the cor curls person of the show. Uh, body weight stuff, uh, I didn't bring a curl bar this time, but if you do dips and push-ups and curl like objects around your house, higher rep, like it's harder to find weight, but if you do like 20 to 30 rep curls, uh, you're gonna get a pump. Um, and that's gonna be, you know, your chest, your shoulders, your triceps. If you're doing dips, push-ups, and curls, that's gonna be all the glamour muscles. And I am an LA douchebag, so I lean into those. Um, I also, uh, if you wanna work your back and you don't have any back stuff, you can do, um, like I call them lawn mowers. You put your wrist down by your opposing ankle and you do a pull up like so, and that works your, your like lats a bit. Um, traps are tricky. Uh, find something really heavy and do some shrugs, not too heavy, don't hurt yourself. Um, and then finally, I'd say for, Abs, you can do abs. You know how to do abs. Uh, legs, squats, man. Do Oh, do uh, pyramids. Do, I'd say, 50 jumping jacks. This is a Sterling K. Brown pyramid, by the way. 50 jumping jacks into 40 squats, into 30 push-ups, into 20 uh, burpees, into 10 pull-ups, and, uh, shit, no, 10 pull-ups and burpees. 20 butt lifts. Okay, 50 jumping jacks, 40 squats, 30 push-ups, 20 burpees, 10 curls do those those are practically available and if your mom has random plasticky thingies you can use these for them gains uh but unless your mom throws you props you probably don't have that option um <laughs> my mom's very helpful i just don't know how you'd find that if you're in the wild uh so that's that, i'd recommend those things also uh superman easy to travel with easy to travel with sponsored by my mom uh also supermans when you lay on the ground and kind of do like an inverted ab thing and you squeeze your back tight and then let it go those work your lower back area and it's good for back pain sometimes putting in the back pain okay that was a very long answer i apologize to anyone that doesn't care about fitness but you should because it'll keep you alive longer uh why is it can you make it go back up and down <laughs> so one day i'll have a studio again until then my family helps me with the live chat the best mods in the game mama and sister jandro Doing the Dorian pose, because social media is what I'm failing at, and Dorian Median Dorian Dorian was our social media man at Collider. I think he's still there, but I'm not, so it doesn't help me right now. The struggle is real. My sister is now moving in to help. Oh boy. Okay, also, uh, what other fitness stuff you need to do? Get some runs in. Uh, even if you don't like running, do a quarter mile, do a fifth of a mile and build up. I try when I've fallen out of running for a long time to do a market amount and then I try to do 10% more the next day. So if I'm only doing a tenth of a mile one day, do 0.11 miles the next day. That 0.11 miles will turn into uh, 0.21 miles the next, no, 0 0.2, 0 0.23 miles the next day. Just always try to like, you know, grow that shit. Um, okay, what no. else? What else we got? <laughs> Uh, okay. What up? We got people from Canada. Scrolling back, scrolling back, scrolling back, scrolling back. 160 people watching my errant madness. Uh, how do I work on vacations where I left off? Do those things and feel better. And if you have any trouble with them, let me know. Uh, Toronto. Hell yeah. Dane DeHaan, no. I get it. Dane DeHaan, like he did a tricky goblin. I think it was the writing more than him, but I totally understand you're, uh, you're not wanting that again. Uh, Naples, Florida. What up? Watching from Alabama, a foreign country in country. Uh, Alabama is land of my favorite, one of my favorite rappers in the world, Mr. Yellow Wolf. So I am a fan of the Bama. Uh, my sister does not like the Yellow Wolf, but I am a big fan of Yellow if Prowler's in Spider-Man, can Miles show up in Venom Morbius? I think Miles should show up soon, but not yet. And I think he should show up through Prowler. Um, I just think we need to figure out what's going on with Sony and Marvel stuff first. But I think it's inevitable. Spider-Man image on the wall. Uh, was that Tobey Maguire in costume, not Tom Holland? Do you think that was an error on purpose? I think it was a video game shot. I think it was like the, the Spider-Man suit from Sam Raimi, but from the Spider-Man PS4 game. My guess is that it's a Sony licensing issue. I think that Sony had the rights to the video game image and used that, but I'm not sure. Any opinion on Doctor Strange 2? They keep announcing changes. There's another video in here about Doctor Strange 2. I actually broke the news uh, before a number of websites that rhyme with Belider. And uh, it felt good to get in the live chat and like really jump in with you guys. So I've got some thoughts on that. I'm bummed. I'm, I'm a Scott Derrickson fan, but I also understand why they want the macro of the universe to be a specific tone so the micro works in that tone of universe. So I see both sides. Uh, I think that Doctor Strange 2 is going to land fine, especially with Scott Derrickson staying on as an EP and especially because Kevin Feige knows what he wants from the universe. Uh, would it be right or make sense that Spider-Man shows up before showing up in the Venom movie? Absolutely, it'll totally make sense. I don't know how they're gonna integrate Venom and Spider-Man, but they'll, they'll make it work. And I think Morbius and Spider-Man need to be. I don't want two Sony Spider-Man movies to not have Spider-Man in them, so I absolutely introduce him first. Both pronunciations work, we hear all kinds of things. <laughs> oh, what about Trini Trinidadians? Trinidadians, both work, excellent. Trinidad is a place I want to visit and cannot speak its deans of. Uh, it's 30T, I feel you will. 
Uh, it's better dark. Ready or not was fun as fuck. Absolutely. I liked Ready or Not. The lead actress was really good. I think that lead actress was Margot Robbie. Uh, I think. I can't remember right now, so I, that wasn't sarcasm at you. Sorry, I didn't word my question very well earlier. I was trying to ask you had any theories on why they used a graffiti of Tobey Maguire's suit instead of Tom Holland. Ah, the Casey Jacks. That question threw me off. Totally. Now we're back. Uh, I think that was Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man costume in the video game that Sony just made. This is a Sony film, so I think it's a licensing issue. I could be crazy. Um, I thought it was a weird choice, but it definitely was the Sam Raimi suit, I think. Definitely, I think. Journalism. Uh, let's see. Ed Harris is Norman Osborn. I think Ed Harris is so good at being volatile. He's so good at being calm and controlled. I don't know if the age works with, uh, how young Tom Holland is being portrayed as. I think it works for Tom Holland's real age, but I want Harry to make sure to be the same age as, uh, Tom. And unless he's Mel Gibson and has kids at 70, probably not going to work. I don't know that. Um, actually, how old is Ed Harris? He's timeless. He looks the same in Top Gun 2 as he did in Apollo 13. Who knows? Um... Maybe not Iron Patriot, but some variation of Hammer taking over Stark's mantle. Dude, I totally agree. Yeah, no, your your point on him coming back as an Iron Patriot like, totally agree. Uh, you guys keep us warm. Vacuuling is falling apart at negative nine. Holy crap, Vancouver. I'm glad I can keep you warm with this madness. Do you have to say GD so much, Mom? G Goddamn. I say fuck too. And shit. And, and cunt. Jesus. And twat. I say a lot of shit. This is my channel, motherfucker. Uh, if you notice in the Morbius trailer, Spider-Man in the background, Spider-Man has the old suit and the Sam Raimi's better, not the MCU suit. <laughs> this is vexing a lot of you, and I agree, it is confusing. I'm not sure why either. Uh, snow is more of a worry in Vancouver, lol. Okay, I'm gonna scroll, scroll, scroll. Tony, snow in Vancouver, discuss. Uh, now we're talking about snow, totally get it. Uh, also, El Pacino was indeed also impressive. Between the three performances, Robert was best and was so snub, but sure. Second goes to Joe Pesci with impressive face acting and such deep looks. I like that you love that performance. Uh, I I'm happy. You've been probably my favorite collider person next to Mark Riley. Just got to uh, say much love and also you think MCU is connected to Morbius or vice versa. Uh, Felipe, thank you very much. I think the Morbius movie will reflect the Marvel Universe, but I don't think the Marvel Universe will reflect the Morbius movie. I think it's a one-way street and I think it's some tricky lawyering and I love Mark Riley and thank you for watching and I did an episode of the Riley Roundtable. Check that out. Also, since Riley uh, has this amazing thing where he's so good at checking live chats, I'm doing it the long way and the hard way, but in the future, I'm going to be doing Streamlabs. So if you guys don't know Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Koidrondro. I will always see those questions and I will either answer them during the episode or open the next episode with them. So check out Streamlabs so I can see it clearer because this is a lot and I'm doing my damnedest. Uh, let's see. No way 1917 isn't taking that cinematography win. I totally agree. Uh, if, I haven't talked about cinematography yet, but I'm getting there. Um, I totally agree. I literally wrote down all plus and definitely Deacons. I think Deacons is it. So I'm gonna get back there. Uh, if Spider-Man 3 doesn't cast Koi for Green Goblin, you're not seeing it. I'm in. Uh, I'm available and in. You guys may have noticed I don't have a job right now. Uh, I'm currently reading all the new X-Men books after hearing you and Amy talk about how Pox, my favorite is Marauders. Dude! Oh, Hawks Pox. Uh, Thank you. And Marauders is incredible. X-Force is also really good. Those are my two favorites is Marauder and X-Force. Incredible. Us also came out in January, right? It's basically forgotten my Oscar season. That's the tricky thing. It's 12 months ago, and that definitely isn't fun. My wife and I love Rango as well. It's our favorite animated film, hands down. That's right, Jason. Goddamn right. California is an underrated pit performance. It is. It is. Oh, I do say goddamn a lot. I'm sorry if you're religious and I'm directly offending you, but it is a habit of mine, and as I am not, it does not sting as much. So I, I do generally, genuinely apologize. But um, I say way worse words. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Timothy. He is one of the best working actors right now. D.H. De Niro for Harry O. Man, the de-aging did not work for me in that movie. Uh, ne Jacob Alordi from Euphoria or Zac Efron be great Nightwing in my humble opinion. Ooh, I would love to see Zac Efron as Nightwing. I don't know Euphoria. I haven't watched it yet, Jenna James. But I am definitely down to check it out. Double mom, double nom, wow, yeah, right? Like Spike for the Koi Pond. Yeah, the Koi Pond makes me happy. Do you think Scar Joe can win? She's nominated for two things, man. Uh, I don't know which which one you're talking about, but I think she could win. I think she could win leading or uh, supporting, to be honest. I don't think she necessarily will, but I think she could. Uh, Laura Dern, no chance of losing. Laura Dern is, Laura Dern is my mom's divorce lawyer, lawyer. That's amazing. There wasn't a scene in any movies this year that comes close to on your left in the portal scene in Endgame. Uh, Harold Stokes. I think that a portal scene in Endgame is the culmination of 23 movies moments. So it is the most visceral experience I had in the theater this year for a series right like the mcu movies are effectively the biggest cinematic tv show because it's it's it's, it's the culmination of those the series finale nah, season finale they wrapped up season three because there's more mcu to come but for me uh, i love that moment but that kind of film is, is not the kind of film the academy looks at so i think that's one of the reasons this joker thing is so important to me is because that movie 
visual effects that should get and there's so many things that should get that it won't necessarily um but after 23 movies that moment absolutely changed my life so i i can i can i can move oh i i forgot kathy bates for richard jewel dude spider dark you're on my shit in a good way like thank you for keeping tabs uh i did not see richard jewel and that's why i didn't write it down because i'm an honest man i'm not gonna lie about seeing a movie i didn't see maybe she's great i will i will see it uh, before oscar season i will update you guys frozen 2 snub i liked frozen 2 wasn't had to train your dragon 3 uh, fighting my fam was great stuff. That made my top 20 of the year. I liked fighting my family a lot. I don't necessarily think it was Oscar-y, but that's just my opinion. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. There's a level where he glitches. What? Uh, did I see, uh, R&B Star Wars Episode Nine Trevorrow script video? I have not watched that yet, but I talked to R&B at the Schmodown, and, uh, we got some schemes. I have not seen it yet. Uh, okay, we're almost so good. We're almost good. We're almost good. One of the, J. Barkel. Yeah, he's great. Uh, he's in Letterkenny. I've never seen Letterkenny, but that's come up five times today. Letterkenny is a big thing at my family's house. Uh, okay, Grand Map in Michigan. Paris, that was incredible. Nashville, Tennessee. Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, Tennessee, Vancouver, Workout Talk, uh, Virginia. Hell yeah. Uh, great, great locations. I'm very excited. Uh, let's see. You, uh, oh, I glitched somewhere talking about anime and manga. Okay, got it. Um, okay, we're at 157. I'm gonna get back to live chat. I'm gonna leave it at let's get more likes because that is a good place to agree with someone. I've been talking for an hour and four minutes straight. This is hard to do without a go host because I just talk. Okay, we are going to get to original screenplay. I wrote down Noah Bombach for The Great Marriage Story. The writing in that was brilliant and The Great Tarantino who writes the hell out of scripts. It's Tarantino, guys. Like, I don't, I don't even know how to dive into those. Uh, I think I'm gonna give it to Bombach by a hair. Um, Tarantino writes very specifically, whereas Bombach I felt like was very approachable for anyone. Um, and that's not faulting either one. If either one wins, I'm all about it. So uh, those are my two. And then I'm, I'm breathing through not all the noms, just the ones that I'm pulling for in this case, because we have been talking for an hour and four minutes and we still have more to talk about. Adapted screenplay. Taika Waititi and Greta Gerwig. There have been like 87 Little Women movies, and this one was still incredible. That is a testament to great writing. Taika Waititi, on the other hand, adapted a story that is so hard to tell. Satire in today's age is, is so hard. Uh, if you haven't noticed, you're on the internet. And the internet is a place of angry, aggressive, negative cynical bullshit and so to make a movie about hitler is not gonna land well for a lot of people and somehow that movie is beloved uh it is a movie about being a better person it is a movie about morality it is a movie about growing as a person and it's doing it all with satire about nazis look at the best mod in the game the m-o-m-d mod the mom bringing me liquid so i can talk please help this is my weirdest life remember okay, take it. oh and the sister of the year okay <laughs> Taika wrote a story that was so hard to tell and it's so funny and it's so endearing and the tone of that movie is both comedic and dramatic in equal measure. Your heart breaks while you're laughing and you laugh while your heart breaks and that is a hell of a thing. But Greta Gerwig adapted a story that's been done before and made it feel new and fresh and interesting. So I'm going to keep those two at a tie. I can't pick one. And finally, cinematography all plus parentheses really Deacons. I love the cinematography of all the movies mentioned but there is no one like Roger Deakins and there is no movie like 1917 this year. Uh, before I saw 1917 I would have said The Joker. I think The Joker is once again 11 nominations. I think I've got like three wins here. Uh, it might win more but I'm just so happy the amount of love it's gotten and I think Roger Deakins if he doesn't win for 1917 that's weird. Uh, I'm a huge Roger Deakins fan and I'm a huge um, fan of how 1917 looked so I'm gonna give it to Mr. Deakins and those are our final three awards that I'm gonna go through. There is a lot of other very important awards production design sound mixing sound editing so many important things and the awards that don't exist because the academy doesn't have them yet and that is best stunts and best casting director i am going to till i go blue in the face yell about the fact that we need oscars for casting and we need oscars for stunts without stunt people we don't have superhero movies or regular movies without casting directors we don't have movies the shape of these things is because of the casting the shape of these feelings is because you identify the people they put in these roles casting directors shape movies so much um, it's very, it's very, very silly. A brilliant prop throw. Oh, that must have been when that, when that worked out. Having family here is amazing. Totally agree. Math is hard, uh, especially when you're talking. Like when you're talking, try ranting for, an, at that point it's probably, you know, 51 minutes because we're at an hour and seven now. Try ranting for 51 minutes straight with a live chat and try to do math. I'm not kidding. It's, it's very tricky and I'm usually very good at math. Uh, just wanted to say hello to Mama and Sister Jondro. Langley M. Neely says hello. Hi, Langley. They know Langley. Hi. The voice of family. Uh, what comics are looking good for tomorrow? Is tomorrow Wednesday already? I thought it was Monday today. Shit, no, I flew in on Monday. 
I'm not sure. I will look and I will definitely be sharing with uh, Dave Cave Draws Archives. Oh, you're great. I know your stuff. Thank you. Your stuff's always great. Uh, I do not know off the top of my head and I, I have failed to look at tomorrow Tomorrow's yet. Summer Christmas. vacation. Oh, yeah. I'm having my Christmas tomorrow. Right behind this camera, I'm not going to show you because it's insane, is all of my Christmas presents. And uh, tomorrow's Christmas. Yours. Yeah. I, every, you, every single one. Are of them. you opening these? Because they're all mine. Uh, no, it's my whole family's Christmas, and I'm very excited to share that with them. But as such, I haven't looked at the comics for tomorrow. I We do our Christmas in January some years. Um, I moved my Christmas for work, and now I'm here. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, I, we, we do Christmas later and different and weird. Um, I'll the theater. I can't get time off. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole mess for, for timing and stuff. So it, it works out to be here now. Uh, Naples, I'm from Cape Corral. Amazing. Can't stay for the chat. Just wanted to leave some love for the Koi Pond from Atlantic City and the Nerd Crew. Oh, dude, Rick has left some of the nicest comments in my videos. Rick Zayas, uh, I appreciate you, man. Hey, greetings from Mexico from a fellow nerd geek, and thanks for all the sweaty commentaries. You're absolutely welcome, Sherlock, Sherlock J.B. Holmes. Uh, we're down to 110 people because we're well over an hour, and that is understandable. I am 110 of you. Thank you, truly. Uh, we are going to get to the Black oh Widow God. footage, and we're going no. to get to uh, some Hawkeye midnight. commentary. It's also almost midnight on the East Coast. Uh, Weaving is the actress in Ready or Not, man. Oh, Samara Weaving. Oh, dude. I haven't seen Ready or Not, and I thought it was Marco Robbie on the poster. I'm sorry. Samara Weaving. I heard she was great. I haven't seen Ready or Not, not a harder guy. Straight up. Apparently, there was an interview with Alex Garland from a few years ago where he said he would have would have done a Doctor Strange movie. Alex Garland made one of my favorite sci-fis of all time with Ex Machina. He would kill, kill. Oh, also Annihilation. Dude, Alex Garland's brilliant. Give him Doctor Strange. That would be powerful as hell. Um... Hugo Weaving's niece. Samara Weaving is Hugo Weaving's niece. And she looks identical to Margot Robbie. Thank you, Langley. I feel better and I also learned a fun fact. Incredible. Koi, my man, was your most underrated superhero of all time in your opinion? Ben Riley or Kyle Rayner? I am a huge fan of both Scarlet Spider and I think the best Green Lantern. Uh, those, I think, are both very underrated. I will defend the Clown Saga all day. Uh, because the Clown Saga... Clown Saga... <laughs> You know in Spider-Man when he's bitten by an irradiated clown? <laughs> the clown saga happens. The clone saga is, to me, when power and responsibility goes awry. To me, I've always seen the clone saga as when Spider-Man basically can't contain his own responsibility. Then he kind of snaps. And what's more of a mental snap than an existential crisis of meeting yourself and not knowing who you are? Not knowing who you are is such a thing we all go through. And I thought that the clone saga, if it had one writer or if it landed with one ending instead of 20 and didn't go on for 50 years, could have been a really cool existential crisis of self. And it could have been a really great opportunity for Spider-Man to have when responsibility goes too far. You can be too responsible. And the reason I love Deadpool is because basically I think when you snap and that responsibility goes, you either live long enough to see yourself become a Deadpool or you die a Spider-Man, y'all. All right. Um, da -da -da. Hey, man, join the Patreon. Cannot wait for the monthly hangouts to start you to bees knees. Oh, dude, thank you for joining the Patreon. Uh, I'm going to be doing monthly hangouts over on the Patreon. There are like 11 tiers in the Patreon, and the hangouts will start in February. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon. I have never had one, and someone found it. AJ Lancaster found it before I even pressed published, I thought. He found it before I knew it was out. So AJ Lancaster and uh, also... Uh, <sighs> The people that are already on there are so incredible. Um, yeah, thank you. Mouthy Marks 2020, hell yeah. Adrian Toomes makes me wonder as to how persons, uh, prisons handled the whole blip situation. Ooh, what if he got out in the blip? Great call, great call. He's wearing, you'll notice, the same outfit he was wearing in the post credit scene in Spider-Man Homecoming. He's in the same prison jumper, but he's clearly out of prison. That is an interesting point, interesting. Uh, nah, nah, nah. What's the Sony Sinister Six gonna be weird group? I agree, Culpado, we'll see. Uh, they're the same person, don't believe the lies, stay woke. <laughs> um... I did gleek at some point. You definitely saw that. I don't know when it was, but you're, you're totally right. Uh, let's see. These are all opinions on who's winning. All right. I'm with you guys. People loving Dragon. Uh, Margot Robbie clones are upon us. Scar Joe and Florence Pugh, best actors working. I, I think they're fantastic. Tarantino not getting a third screen out of Oscar. It's tricky. Um, dialogue was great. Thoughts on the Gotham Jokers? Uh, I'm not big on Gotham, man. Uh, I respect it. I'm glad you dig it. I just, I couldn't get into it. I watched it some, but it wasn't my thing. I'm just, I'm not going to ignore that comment. I just, it wasn't for me. Uh, okay, we are almost back. Staying hydrated. That's right. Um, did Margot de-age? Uh, Margot is ageless. Uh, let's see. Agreed casting stunts overdue. You crazy man. Haven't seen JoJo, but ScarJo is superb in Marriage Story, so she better at least get recognition for that. Koi, my man, who's your most underrated superhero? Oh, I got to that. So we're now we're catching up. We need Craven the Sinister Six. I think that we're gonna. Uh, Schwartz user. I'm one cool cat. That is all. Thanks, man. Uh, let's see. Merry Christmas, Koi and Koi's family. Thanks, Zach Mendoza. I delivered it out loud. Uh, let's see. Christmas. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Alita needs three sequels. I, it could. 
Um, are we at 4,000? Oh yeah, I hit, okay, so Brian and G, we hit 40,000, uh, 4,000 hours last week, uh, not last week, like within the last four days, which was the last week. Um, and now I'm waiting on approval from YouTube. So they said it could take up to a month, which I hope it doesn't. So we'll be at 4,000 users as soon as YouTube approves me. I've not used any music and I've not had any graphics that I didn't already own or people said I could use. So if you're watching this YouTube, I've been a good boy. Let me have my monetization. Minus your potty mouth. Oh, that went fuck. <laughs> Just stopping in to say what's up, Koi. Waiting on Crisis and avoiding spoilers. Uh, you're my first stop for spoilers, Koi. Peace, buddy. Oh, yeah. We got to talk Crisis. Oh, I should have opened with that. Shit. Well, actually, no, because there's going to be spoilers. And I'll do little timestamps in here because we've done a lot of live chat. I'm avoiding for those spoilers for Crisis 2. Uh, the Clown Saga. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're almost back because that's where I left off. Joker, Joker Spider-Man crossover written by Koi. I could make some weird shit out of that. Hello from Rhode Island. Midnight with Koi. Uh, your opinion of Marvel introduces Wolverine in the Hulk movie. I think that's what they're going to do. I think there's a reason we got the Hulk movie back very conveniently when the uh, MCU was reacquiring the Fox stuff. I think that Universal had the Hulk for a long time, and I think that now Marvel upped some money, and we're going to get that exact thing. Uh, let's see. Who's looking after Spidey? Spidey Cat. Uh, Spidey Cat's got a great, great walker. Uh, the Spidey Cat's back home. Uh, let's see. Okay, you guys want to get into Crisis on Infinite Earths? Let's do that. Okay, I'm going to say one new story on the way to that, and then, uh, I've only done the Oscars and Morbius. I haven't done Hawkeye or Black Widow or Talk Crisis on Infinite Earths, so we're going to make these all a lot shorter than all of the rest because we are at an almost Disney-length film. Okay, uh, we are going to start off with me briefly saying the Hawkeye has not been delayed indefinitely, and this is a PSA to check your sources. A lot of news stories ran with this, a lot of new sites ran with this, a lot of credible sites ran with this. From what I can tell, that was never true. Uh, this feels like one of those situations where one person said it and five people heard it, and then 25 people heard them, so just be careful with your news. To my knowledge, the Hawkeye series has not been indefinitely canceled. So this is your last spoiler warning for Crisis on Infinite Earths. After I drink this green drink, I'll be talking about Crisis and Infinite Earths. Only, only one moment, because I'm not going to cover the whole episode, because it is late, and, and we've been doing this a long time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Crisis on Infinite Earths. Spoiler. Ezra Miller showed up on the show. The movie Flash was on the freaking screen with the TV flash. They can do that. I was so impressed by Crisis on Infinite Earths having all the old TV shows. I love Tom Welling being on there next to Brandon Routh, who, yes, was in a movie as Superman, but he was already there at the CW. He was already available because he was playing another character and all the Adam stuff looking like Brandon Routh because they're both Brandon Routh because Superman is played by Brandon Routh and the Adam's played by Brandon Routh. That was all brilliant. And I love that they made him Kingdom Come Superman. All inspired. I loved the Burt Ward cameo. I loved the Birds of Prey cameo. I love the deep cut references. I loved all of that, but nothing, nothing prepared me for the Justice League and Batman versus Superman cinematic multi-million dollar flash to pop up on a multi-million dollar flash. Didn't repeat myself. They're two different things. The Flash show and the Flash movie met because of Flashpoint. And that means the Flashpoint movie might actually happen. We've been hearing about a Flashpoint movie for so long and I've always doubted it. I never thought we'd get an Ezra Miller solo movie, but the fact that they kept Ezra Miller in that suit and put him on the Flash show means that we can carry on with Ezra Miller. That means there's a, a, a launch point. So this is my crazy theory. I think Wonder Woman 1984 is an Elseworld. I think Joker is an Elseworld. I think the new Batman with Robert Pattinson is an Elseworld. I think all of these movies are different canons. I think Shazam is a different universe than any of the, the Zack Snyder films. I think they're all separate. I think that the Wonder Woman and Aquaman we had in Justice League are the Wonder Woman and Aquaman we had in their solo movies. I think the Wonder Woman 84 might be a new Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. So my crazy theory is that the Flashpoint movie they're making with Ezra Miller is the opening of the film. And they use Flashpoint not to dissipate continuity, but to fix continuity. I think they're going to solve all of the different universe's problems with Flashpoint instead of landing the movie there, starting the movie there. So why is Wonder Woman taking place in 1984 and why did they delay it for a year? Maybe because they decided to make it a little different and wait for the Flash to do this crazy thing where he showed up in the freaking show. What if all the DC stuff is connected by way of Flashpoint and we get Robert Pattinson integrated into the new version of what they do with Batman and the Justice League? What if we have Aquaman and Wonder Woman get to stay in the universe and maybe Henry Cavill, man, because Henry Cavill's such a good Superman. But what if Flashpoint solves all of our continuity problems? What if we get to the point where 
everything is truly connected and make it have a Batman Beyond with Ben Affleck as old Bruce Wayne. Like, what if we earn that? Um, for me, the moment I saw Ezra Miller on screen next to Grant Gustin, that was infinite possibility because now they've said everything is on the table, everything's possible, everything is connected. So I think that's what's going to happen. I think I think there's a reason Wonder Woman was delayed. I think there is uh, a strong possibility that we'll get... Uh, I think Robert Pattinson's Batman is going to stay separate for a while. I think the Bat family is going to be over there. But I think with whatever seeds they plant in the Flash movie, that can be set over there. Joker can be set over there. And all those things can happen while they're simultaneously building universe. I think we can get independent DC films and get a shared universe film with Justice League. I think with Flashpoint and with this moment in the TV show, that is now both possible. So that's a strength that no other studio has. They have an entire seven years of Arrow continuity that is now technically canon in the films, which is absolutely insane. There was a scene with Stephen Amell that ended and led into a scene with Ezra Miller. That is absurd. So um, this moment could literally mean everything, and I am absolutely flabbergasted. Um, holy crap. I'm gonna check a lot chat. Because I told you I was gonna make this shorter. It's my big hot take. I think everything's in Elseworld, and I think everything can come together with Flashpoint. I think it's gonna be the opening of the film. 144 would be the number one back up. All right, let's see what you guys think of my absurd theory. Uh, let's see, let's see. Again, tinfoil hat theories are just for me. I just say them out loud. It's not what I'd put money on. Don't put money on my theories. I'm a crazy person. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where did I say we we're going to leave off? Uh, I think I said about like hitting like or something because I thought it was a nice yeah, end, mm -hmm. and YouTube-y. Uh, okay, let's see. Ben Riley greater than Kyle Rayner. Hot take, but I, I love them both. Uh, an, irradi <laughs> an irradiated clown to bite Peter Parker. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, do you think the success of Joker will felt the tone of Batman? I think the Joker is going to affect everything, man. I think we're going to get a Lex Luthor movie. I think we're going to get an actual detective Batman movie because we showed that containment works. Sorry, my green juice. Um, I think... What? Detective Batman? Yeah. Oh, I think... Okay, you have, Joanna hasn't heard this yet because my sister doesn't watch my content. <laughs> Uh, I think that the Thanks, reason man. not just the worst just shares my last name being my sister doesn't use it to look up my, the last name on YouTube. Uh, my theory, Robert Pattinson is tall but thin and you look at him you don't think brooding. You don't think mm -hmm. like that kind of Batman. Neil Adams' Batman was more life and like athletic and more of like a runner or swimmer's bod than like a bodybuilder bod. So I think the casting of Robert Pattinson is indicative of a more detective-like story where it's using that kind of brain power and we're going to get a long-form trilogy and I think they're going to use more villains. I think there's going to be a big Arkham Corporation. And I think the reason there's like 12 villains is because we're going to meet a lot of villains at once. And then there's going to be a detective story that unfolds throughout the first movie. And then all the villains we met in the first one can do what Spider-Man's doing and have individual villain movies if they do well. And then the trilogy can be this overarching story. And Pattinson's going to be signed on for like six films. I think it's a detective story. And I think him being a thinner build is indicative of everything they're going to do. Oh, hell yeah. Right? And I think we're going to finally get the blue cape. I think it's going to be like animated series. Oh, yeah. I could be wrong. These are all crazy ideas. I think we're also going to get the bat suit in the next three weeks. Because um, they're going to have to start shooting it. And they're not going to let paparazzi get the first look at it. Because that is that is not the move. DC's done an incredible job showing official photos before the vultures of the film industry got to it. If you uh, are a fan of mine and are a paparazzi, I often speak ill of paparazzi. And that's only from experience. And if you're that, then there are so many better things to photograph than people doing their jobs or living their lives. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Do I think Bale or Damon either deserved a nom? I do, man. Um, didn't Bale get a nod? <gasps> did he not? <gasps> oh, man. I've been so busy, excited about people that did get noms. I, I haven't had time for snubs. I think Damon uh, was great, and I definitely think Bale deserved a nod. Shit. Maybe, you know what probably happened? I think they probably both went for lead actor, and it split the vote, so people that loved Ford versus Ferrari didn't know who to vote for, and it was like it was like... Too many people running for president and it split the vote. So I think they probably both ran for lead actor and then people that love the movie, like if 100 people voted and 50 went to Bale and 50 went to Matt Damon, but 100 went to Leo, that's messy. Um, I didn't notice that. Uh, Holy Crisis Koi, Ezra Miller meets Grant Gustin and all Erebos and Earth Prime Justice League. Dude, right? Can we get a movie based on Thor 356, Thor versus Hercules? If they are going to put Hercules in the uh, MCU, I think that should be freaking Ethan Suple. Have you seen Ethan Suple lately? The dude is down 200 pounds and yoked, and he looks like the gypsy... Um, what's, oh, I just forgot my boy's name. Uh, the fighter I love. The Gypsy King. Uh, Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King, is one of my favorite boxers, and he is an absolute beast, and that's who Ethan Suple looks like now. Look up Ethan Suple 2020. He looks incredible, and I'm really... Like, being proud of someone for being in shape is a weird thing to say, but as someone that loves the gym, I'm, like, really proud of him. Like, he did really impressive work. 
What's the likelihood we'll get Omega Red in Phase 4 or 5? How are they sleeping on bringing him to the big screen for so long? Shorts, I agree. Uh, I love Omega Red. I think he's a very cinematic villain. I think he has a lot of opportunity to be in the next wave of X-Men. And arguably, right now... Okay, this is political. So if pol politics makes you uncomfortable, plug your ears. Earmuffs, politics! With everything going on with Russia, it'd be a good time to have a Russian supervillain again like the Rocky days. Let's bring Omega Red in. Because Russians... Maybe the end of us. Okay, uh, back to non-political talk. Um, what common goal would be... Not, not like, I don't have anything to trust people. I'm just scared. Uh, let's see. What common goal would, be a bi would a biochemist with a thirst for blood possibly have with a demolition crew chief with a spider gr grudge? I'm going to read that again because that was funny. What common goal would a biochemist with a thirst for blood possibly have with a demolition crew chief with a spider grudge? That is fantastic. That is exactly what the post credit scene at the end of the trailer was effectively saying. Uh, and that is a great question. I think, uh, I think it's going to be spider-based. That's one of the reasons I think Spider-Man's in the movie. I think that the grudge is they both share a spidey grudge. I also think that Venom might develop a spidey grudge in Venom 2, which turns into the Sinister Six. Um, that's very funny, though. Uh, Incredible Hulk and Disney Plus? I don't think so. I don't know. Um, I don't think the Hulk Universal thing is official. Brian, I don't think it's official either, but I think it's all but official. Um, when you get Super Chat, it'll be easier. I agree, Darren. I just need them to approve me. Please! Please approve me. Rick Duran is saying uh, that El Mayambe is saying the Hulk story isn't true. I don't know for sure. I think it is, but he could be right. Uh, although Crisis wasn't great, I enjoyed it for what it is worth. And yet again, this crossover showed me one thing. Next big time MCU crossover, we better see TV included. And what I mean is we better. Jenna James, I think that we will be getting everything crossing over. WandaVision leading into Doctor Strange 2, etc. I think all the MCU shows are going to do exactly that. That's what's coming. That's why they canceled the Netflix stuff and all the other stuff. Uh, gotta say goodbye. Thank you, Langley. It was great to see you. Um, that cameo was mind-blowing and brilliant. I was floored. Wait, what? Uh, oh, Langley, I, I said a hundred spoilers. I hope you didn't hear it from me. Um, see Netflix characters I care about and S.H.I.E.L.D. characters fighting to let... I don't think it's ego, Jenna. Uh, I think, I think it's, um, scheduling and I think it's controlling one universe. I don't think that the tone of the Netflix would all work in the MCU. I think that some of the characters would, but I don't, I don't think it's ego. I think, I think it's making something cohesive. Um, need to watch Crisis. That was wild. Uh, should keep Arrow the same guy in the movies. I'd love if, if Steven wanted to play Arrow in the movies. Um, they're not Elseworlds except Joker. Xena, I don't know. That's my theory. Um, hey, Koi, I'm just getting here. Might have already talked about this, but do you think Sonyverse could be absorbed in the MCU as a new agreement between Sony and Marvel? I don't. I think the Sonyverse is going to stay over there. Uh, I don't think so, but it's possible because Marvel's got, you know, a lot of goals with Spider-Man, but I don't see that happening soon. Um... Is Morbius not a misunderstood a hero later on? In the comics, Morbius tries to kill bad guys, but he's still a vampire. So it's tricky. He's definitely a, a, more the anti than the anti-hero. He's a vampire. But he, like they always write him as a doctor and he's trying to help people. You know, he's, he's a good, he's got a good intentions. He's a vampire. Uh, anything can happen. Just wish they don't try to touch anything close to Joker. I, I'd prefer that Joaquin's Joker stay as far away from the universe as possible. I just think it'd be cool if they referenced that Elseworld through Flashpoint. I don't want Joker to come anywhere near the shared universe. I'm just saying they can have a scene where you see pieces of that Gotham. You can see the Arkham Asylum that is from Joker in a movie that's, do you know what I mean? Um, I ask rhetorically at a camera. Uh, let's see. Green Lantern core shot, yes. Uh, Morbius lives in a blade. Thought Christian Slater would be in Joker in 1989. That would have been cool. That theory is amazing. I want DC to make that movie. Have you considered opening a studio like your own network? Uh, Richie, I'm. this is kind of what I'm doing. Like, this is not a studio. It's my, it's my family's house. But I do plan to expand as much as possible and see what else I can do with others. Is that vague enough? Is that, is that, is that political enough? <laughs> I'm running for president. Like, I believe I can. Uh, okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Pattinson isn't big, but sure is fit. It shows in Lighthouse. Yeah, he's, he's getting fit, man. He's gonna be Batman. I agree. Thank you for... I agree. Uh, na, 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 na. Call your sister comic book nerd, too. Brian asks if you're the comic book nerd, too. She gets excited about stuff. Like, she's also a Pattinson fan. But, nah, less so. But okay. But you are so Marvel, and I'm just so DC. So I'm we way less a... just Marvel now. Like, well, if you've noticed, good. like, I read as much DC as I do Marvel, and I watch all the DC films. Like, I've always watched the films. That's like, true. They've been killing it. It's, it's not, and it's also DC prints less comic than Marvel, so I have more yeah. to talk about with Marvel. I'm not, like, one side or the I other. I just like the, the darker tone that DC goes for. I get you. She's dark. I'd like, uh, I'd like the audience to know my sister's happy. right here. She's not a disembodied voice. Uh, glad to see Koi still going. Let's talk some comics. Farky, I did not prep for comics. I appreciate you wanting to talk comics, because that is a large part of this channel. Unfortunately, I did not prep them, because I wanted to get into all this news, and I've already ran almost a feature length. Koi, the crazy theories guy. That's right, Spider-Dark. Uh, Batson, I love the idea of Flashpoint fixing the DCEU's continuity. Right? Right? 
Uh, let's see. Random thought is the best part of the Koi streams. Thank you. Random thoughts, because I have infinite time except for sleep, is a benefit of YouTube. Uh, let's see. Epi for this one yet. Yeah, I agree. It's real good. Butterfly effect. Right? That'd be so dope. Koi, what do you think about uh, Spider-Man 3 being an adaptation of Infinity Crisis storyline has some of the same characters? Um, I don't think they should do Identity Crisis yet. I think it's a little soon. Stream's a little off, Koi. Uh, hopefully it got fixed. I don't know how to, how, how to help. Uh, I'm not good at this yet. Okay, I'm gonna get off the live chat to cover our last story because holy crap, I've been talking a long time. Last story of the day. Black Widow trailer teaser thing. Uh, it was like a minute and a half. It aired during uh, football, and it was way more action, way more Taskmaster, way more story. I am so much more interested in Yelena's character arc now. Like, those 30 extra seconds of Florence Pugh, maybe plus Little Women, made me, like, fully there. Um, I also think that we have a really cool opportunity to grow the the prequel universe through Black Widow. I think they're setting up some really cool stuff. Sorry, for talking a long time. Um, and I really think that the action in this really upped itself, like... I think they were developing all this footage while they were showing us the more dramatic scenes. Uh, I also think that the... Uh, oh, thank you so much. I also think that the fight in the house they showed us in that first trailer is a great indication of the tone of the film, but the big spectacle action is going to be the third act stuff, and I think that's really important to show before a, a May release. Brought to you by V8. Brought to you by V8 Green Juice. Um, V8, I'm available. I'll drink your juice on camera. Let's see? Um, so yeah, I think, I think the action looks great. I love that they're making a Jason Bourne slash Daniel Craig era Bond movie, um, with the action. I love that, uh, the fights feel visceral and, and connecting. I love the family, fam family elements. Uh, I love that David Harbour looks like such a boss in this. Uh, and I, I like Scarlett Johansson, man, so I think she looks great. Uh, some of the shots look straight out of a comic. When she's, there's like a four second frame where she's running straight down a hallway in her classic comic book Black Widow outfit, and I, I cheer every time I see it. Uh, also, Taskmaster, I might have called... A long time ago on this episode of comic book shopping with david harvard i'm very proud of it done a lot of those plugs today um so yeah all that stuff i think it's, it's a great teaser i think it's a great way to get people invested in the movie that comes out in may i also think it's really smart to put it in a football uh slot because that movie hasn't leaned into the action nearly as heavily as other marvel movies yet so to put your action trailer during football is a great call uh, i think yelena's gonna die um, I think that green vest she's wearing at the end of the trailer that is later worn by Black Widow is an indicator of her death in this movie. Uh, I also still think she might be Taskmaster, but I'm thinking it less and less. Um, yeah, I love this teaser. I think it's really interesting. I can't wait to see Taskmaster, who clearly has fought Captain America, because he wields that shield a lot like Cap. So, uh, the way Taskmaster's powers work or is he has, uh, photographic reflexes. So, like, you know, you have photographic memory, you remember everything. If he sees someone fight, he can fight like them forever. He's a great, like, what a cool villain. Uh, the only person that's ever beat him every time is Deadpool because Deadpool's crazy, so he can't model himself after Deadpool because you can't follow a maniac's movements, which I love. Uh, so I think Taskmaster has definitely fought Cap. I think there's a lot of indications of that in the trailer. He's a Cap villain a lot of the time, and uh, I'm really excited for Black Widow. I, I know a lot of people thought that Marvel ended when um, Endgame ended, but I, I would argue that they have a lot left in the tank, and I think that the crossover between movies and TV is really going to change how people perceive these things. I think they're reinventing cinema again like they did with uh, 2008's Iron Man, so I think that Black Widow is a great next phase for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I'm very excited for it. And this would have been, this is very comforting right now after talking for an hour and 31 minutes. This feels like a blanket. Um, yeah, uh, actually, do you guys want to say anything? You want to talk about the Black Widow trailer? You don't have to, you're welcome to. You've been sitting there the whole time, so you don't want to be a disembodied voice. Uh, my mom wants to come say hi as I, as I wrap out. Hi. It's my mom. See, I got the mom loud shit right there. Here. Mom Jandro. She's the voice of uh, well, the person helping me. She held the <laughs> camera for 10 minutes. And she also, you guys talk to her on Twitter. She's in the live chats. Uh, she jumps up on YouTube. She's in the Mouthy Mercs uh, Facebook group. My mom is one of my, no, my mom's my biggest supporter, not one of my. I'm just usually nice to fans. So I'm like, one of my, like my mom's the biggest. My mom's my mom. Uh, she's the best. And uh, the yeah. fact she was willing to hold the camera is just like, she. After shoulder surgery. I just, now I just feel bad. <laughs> Before I was like, oh good, I'm a nice person. And now I'm like, wow, I'm just a monster. Uh, yeah, so my mom's the greatest. Uh, we're I'm here for Christmas. Uh, I'm very excited. 
Uh, my mom is uh, the biggest supporter of me loving comics and movies. My mom got me into all the stuff I love. Most of these movies she got me. Uh, they're the whole family's movies, but like my mom's always supported uh, all of this. So without this person and my dad who's asleep, I would not be the person talking to you right now. That it's literally because of them. My dad got me into comics. He gave me Claremont, Byrne, Era, X-Men, and he also coached me through Spider-Man. He had a wizard subscription. Dude got me into comics. My mom has always loved movies. We had VHSs with three movies stacked on them. And a lot of times there was a few minutes missing because six hours wasn't quite enough. And that was a fun journey as a kid to discover movies and new endings. That's another episode. Uh, anyway, I, I want to thank my mom for all the, the greatness she has bestowed upon me. I'm going to wrap up the live chat with, uh, with my mom here, I guess. Yeah. Okay, let's see. This is how I've been doing it with that live chat. See if anybody's got any different takes. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's see, where'd we leave off? I give all the movies Ford versus Ferrari. I think it was great. Uh, Koi, what do you think? Okay, that's where we left off. Boom. Uh, I want to see Blackheart on screen. I think Blackheart could come in Doctor Strange 3. I think Doctor Strange 2 is going to be Nightmare, and I think that would lead into Blackheart nicely. Stream is a little off still. Not sure what that means, not sure how to help, but thank you for letting me know. Once I know technology, Joey Rasool is helping me when I get back in LA, um, so I will I will figure that there out. There is a slight delay. Oh, there's a delay. Okay, terribly sorry. Um, just using whatever internet I got. Uh, Rick Deckard. Hi, Mighty Koi. Chances to see Amy Dahl with you on a stream in the future. You guys are my favorite duo to watch. Greetings and love from Italy. As soon as scheduling allows, Amy and I are going to do whatever we can. I love how much you guys love us working together. Amy is an absolute absolute sweetheart. She's a precious human. I will work with her whenever I get the opportunity. Uh, we are scheming. Um, let's see. Let's see. I feel that the Doom Patrol from Titans is on the Earth and the Doom Patrol from the series is a different Earth, hence different professors. I think so too. That's a great call. That's a really great call. I've thought of that and then forgot it. Yeah. No, no. I'm gonna give you full credit. <laughs> Eric Walker, great idea. Um, it's hard when you're not talking, right? It's just like, I'm standing in a frame. Uh, my mom, ladies and gentlemen, internet clapping. You hear it? Thank you guys. You guys are amazing. Uh, I'll get to the comments when you popped up and you'll, you'll understand the people are amazing. Um, if, if Stephen Well plays Aaron in the movies, he better have a goatee. He better. Uh, dude, Stephen, I've known Robbie forever, but I hadn't met Stephen yet. So meeting Stephen and interviewing him was so weird. Cause everybody's like, you look just like Green Arrow. And then I met Stephen and I was like, I look like Green Arrow from the comics, but I also kind of look like Stephen, but not to be egotistical, but like our coloring and face shape and stuff. I was like, I look like Green Arrow from the comics. You look like Green Arrow. That's why your cast is Green Arrow. But I met him and I was like, I see what people are saying about the comics by way of your face. Uh, which was very funny. Once again, I'm not saying I look like Stephen Mell. I'm saying I look like Green Arrow and so does he. Don't, don't at me, bro. Um, do you think we'll get bad Wonder Woman and bad Aquaman and Flashpoint as well as Thomas Wayne's Batman? I think it'd be hard to explain that, uh, but I think we might get Thomas Wayne's Batman. I also think there's going to be a whole smorgasbord of stuff thrown at you. So I hope they don't go like evil blankety blank because I think that's always a little cliche. Uh, I liked it in Logan to a point, but even that seemed a lot. So uh, that's a much longer conversation, but I think maybe. Uh, I just don't think necessarily. Uh, did he already mention that the Sonyverse version of the Vulture or is the actually the same MCU version of the Vulture? Uh, Seattle KO, it is absolutely, in my opinion, the MCU Vulture. I think that is 100% him gathering the Sinister Six, which will stay in the Sony-verse, but that means that Sony can borrow Marvel characters now, and I think that was part of the deal to get Spider-Man back for two more movies. One independent, one team. Uh, a lot of accents in Black Widow. Yeah, I mean, the Russian, American. I think they're intentionally doing that with espionage. I also love seeing all the Black Widows, like, team up and, like, all that madness. Like, it's absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. I, I'm a fan. Um, let's see. Everyone was giving their all in the accents. Dude, like they were going, going for it. T Taskmaster looks dope, but I kind of wish we could have gotten at least one film focused on just Ezra Miller's Flash to establish him. I want Wally West. Like we've got Barry Allen, who's great, but like, I want a Wally West movie. So I feel like that's going to be our solo Flash movie down the line. I don't know if that's even possible, but I, I, I feel you. Taskmaster mimicking, mimicking Nat was so epic, dude. So cool. Um, LL Josh, that fan cast has been there for years. Be different fan cast. Someone else, guys. Same goes for you, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. F4 fan casters, not saying those actors don't fit those roles. Uh, I think you're saying that those are the obvious casting choices, and I think I agree, but I think that in the case of John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, and uh, Zach Efron, then sometimes the obvious is the best, because I think all three of them would kill it as three of the four in the Fantastic Four. Uh, Daniel Drew, what up? Uh, Taskmaster looked a lot better. Right, the mask looked better. Um, Yelena going to die? Whoa, both theory, Corey. Yeah, I don't think she stays on to be the new Black Widow. I think Yelena's... I think she dives to her death, too. There's a lot of diving in that trailer. And that diving happened in Endgame, and it ended a Black Widow. I think Black Widows dive their death a lot. Um, let's see. You think it should look similar to Crossbones? I think the reason he doesn't look similar to Crossbones is because of Crossbones. I think that would be uh, a little too similar, but I, I see what you're saying. Uh, Rachel Weiss is definitely evil, right? Rachel Weiss. I think everyone expects her to be, so she won't be, um, but maybe. Uh, I, I just think it's the, the move. Jake G should make different Joker origin stories set in different eras. Jake Gyllenhaal, 
Should be in every movie. If he plays multiple Jokers, I'm in. Hi, Koyser. Great of you to take time on your vacation to talk to us. Oh, Man of the Movie Nerd, I'm so happy to be here. We're wrapping up, but, but thank you. I, I definitely am, I definitely was like, I'm not going to work all day. I'm not going to work all day. I'm not going to work all day. I did three hours of emails, handled a bunch of business calls, and then got in a live chat. So I'm on a vacation tomorrow. I actually am. I worked. I did like a six-hour work day on my vacation, and this is... I, but I love you guys. This is truly flattering because there's 156 you here with me uh marvel would be crazy to kill florence Pugh, wouldn't they though would they be crazy maybe they're just crazy enough to do it uh coy what do you think the chance of the flash tv show using red death as the next season villain as a twist because i feel ever since name dropping red death they can't be just be a name drop uh since it just got greenlit i think red death could come into play i think it's going to be a budget thing and i think it's going to be really exciting deadpool rescuing weasel was a good taskmaster fight i agree that was yes hi coy's mom hi Hearts, Hayes. Okay, so we're catching up. Highs, highs, hearts. So many hearts. Adorables. <laughs> Hi, Stephanie. Greatest mod mom ever. Smiley face. Hello, lovely lady. What a boy you raised. Oh, thanks for both of us, Spider Man. <laughs> uh, hi, mom. Hi. Koi's mom rocks. Uh, that's so awesome. Wish my dad read comics. It was a very, it's why I'm here. Um, and Larry's comics in Lowell, Massachusetts. My dad got me started. Larry kept me going because Larry, I like helped him do stuff and he, like I, like, I helped him with the store and he would be like, here, have some comics. Or like, here's a discount on comics. Larry, I cannot think enough either. I had all those Disney VHS tapes. Dude, those boxes smelled so dope. Um, <laughs> what's my favorite Uncanny X-Men book? Uncanny X-Men 156. Kitty Pride's on the cover. Um, lock jaws on her shoulder. It's a Christmas issue. I'm a nerd. Holy yeah, why you probably know which long box it's in. <laughs> we, we saw you going through <laughs> That's my favorite. That's my favorite. Or uh, or X Men three hundred where Colossus and Juggernaut fight in that bar, and it's John Meter Junior art, and it's dope. Yeah, you're such a Juggernaut. <laughs> Juggernaut's so great, and Colossus is great too. My little brother just came downstairs, so his brother's still talking two hours later. Koi, I hope you get a, have a bit of a nap after the stream. I've been talking so fast and so long and so loud. Uh, better enjoy it. My mother is no longer on this earth, and she always supported my nerdom. Kingsport Cal, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, I love that your mom supported you, and I appreciate my mom every day, and I'm so glad. You had a mom that no matter what supported you and no matter what loved you. That's, that's my heart goes out to you, Kingsport Cal. Um, thank you for sharing. And I love nerd moms. That's, that's really rad you had that. Uh, hi, mom. What about Mephisto ideas? I think Mephisto and Blackheart, you got to pick one. Um, and I see them going maybe more Blackheart. Uh, do, 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 do. I, I heard about R&B's thing. I haven't seen it. Uh, finally watching live the next couple of days. I'm going to binge your other videos on here. Yeah, Daniel Drew, welcome to the club. Uh, to the Koi Pond. Welcome to the Koi Pond. Uh, I'm hyped as fuck about the Eternals. Man, I even read the swears. Uh, I love knowing nothing about it. <laughs> Rick Duran, I'm just excited because the cast and the fact that I hear it's like filmic. I'm excited they're using film and I'm excited it feels like a film from what I've heard. And uh, Frosty over at Clatter said it was very Jack Kirby. And one, I was proud of him for knowing who Jack Kirby was. And two, that's what it should look like. Uh, Brad Pitt for Green Arrow. Dude, 90s Brad Pitt as Captain America or 2000s Brad Pitt as Green Arrow would have been amazing. Uh, stream is messed up. Just close it and restart it and sync back. Oh, great. Okay. If you're having problems, I'm almost done, but close it, restart it. Uh, tell your mom that she's an angel man. She knows. But I <laughs> and I did. Uh, okay. Brad Pitt was hot. Brad Pitt is hot <laughs> Dr. Doom. Uh, I mean, if Brad Pitt got his face scarred up, I feel like America would mourn like Dr. Doom did. So I like that idea. Like Victor Von Doom, like, no, my face. And like America's like, not Brad Pitt's face. Let's see. Okay. We're almost to the bottom. We're almost to the bottom. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, right, Jack, Jack Efron would be a great Johnny Storm, and Jake is the man. Uh, my enthusiasm is contagious. Thank you very much, Bruce Cambosos. Uh, do you watch Jake on John Mulaney's new Netflix special, Music Man, The Music Man? Oh my God, The Music Man! Uh, I watched the 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 sad lunk uh, the sad lunk bunch. No, what is it? The sack lunch bunch. Uh, the moment it dropped, because I am a huge John Mulaney fan, and I got surprised by Jake Gyllenhaal being the craziest music teacher of all time, and that was such a gleeful moment. He was like Nightcrawler uh, meets. Yeah, oh, I described him as something the other day. Uh, shit. Oh, Nightcrawler meets Okja. Like, that character was like Jake and Okja and Jake and Nightcrawler into one crazy music teacher, and I loved it. Uh, Jake could pull, I mean, uh, Efron could pull off a couple heroes. Human Torch, Nova, Nightwing, Booster Gold, all of those. Uh, I'd love to see him as a social media influencer, Booster Gold. Imagine if Booster Gold was like a douchey Logan Paul, and that is a redundancy because Logan Paul is a douche. But like a, like a guy from the future that's like, hey, I'm here for your likes, blah, blah, blah. And like that's that guy from his Booster Gold. I think it'd be hilarious. Um, I don't know why I just said him Logan Paul. He needed it though. How many folks of Gun Suicide Squad do you think will perish? Most of them. I think we're gonna have five or six at the end. Uh, I think... Uh, I think we're going to be surprised by Dust Mulch, and I think he's going to be... Uh, I want him to be. It's a bias, but I think Dust Mulch is going to do a lot. Got to go, but keep up the sweatiness. Appreciate it. We're down to 148 as we're wrapping up. Uh, since it went and got Fox, almost kind of wish they would cancel most of the Arrowverse shows and make a Justice League show after Crisis. Maybe they will. Cole, you know, would make a great voice actor, right? Spider Dark. Uh, I've never done... Uh, never done... 
I'm so good at speaking, I agree. Uh, I've actually done voice work for, um, like, dialogue stuff for, like, voiceover narration stuff, but I've never, like, voiced a cartoon, and that is a dream of mine. Uh, I've got some friends at Mattel that I wanted to work with, and maybe one day. Uh, then I appreciate that. That is, a, that is a very good compliment. 160 people, let's get more likes. Hell yeah. From Canada, Micronauts as an anime series would rock, and I could totally do Micronauts. That is my speed. Uh, Theron Edgerton as Captain Britain. Theron Edgerton would be absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, I just, you spell-checked Theron when I said it right. That's funny, because I, I said Theron because you wrote there. Anyway, okay. Doom or Namor for Black Panther 2? I think there is a 100% chance one of the two. I don't know if two of the two, and I don't know which one, but I think one or both of the two, and that shall be the stream today. We covered Black Widow. We covered Yelena dying. We covered the action, the cap fight, Taskmaster. We covered Hawkeye not being delayed indefinitely that we know of for sure. We covered all my Oscar picks, most of my Oscar picks. We covered Morbius, and we covered Crisis on Infinite Earths and my insane Everything is an Elseworld theory. Thank you guys so very much. There are over 160 of you in the live chat. This was one hour and 43 minutes. And I didn't even talk about the Schmodown. I barely talked about weightlifting. Conor McGregor is fighting Cowboy Cerrone this Saturday. There will be so much more content coming at you. But in the meantime, I'm going to nap. Uh, and I'm going to take I'm gonna take tomorrow. I'm not even, I'm not even going to stream tomorrow, no matter what breaks. Unless, yes, you will. <laughs> unless I don't even know. I don't know what I could say to not break because then I'll make it happen by like putting it out in the universe. Uh, thank you guys very much. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, you all have been amazing. Thank you to my family for supporting me in life and also in this ridiculousness of getting this camera set up. And I would like to thank you for watching. And as always, I would like to thank comic books for existing. I'll see you guys soon. That's good at least. Internet, welcome to the traditional Koi Jandro post credit scene wherein I have technical difficulties and try to close my phone and it fails very, very dramatically. No new questions popped up in the live chat as I was wrapping up, which is usually a thing. Uh, someone asked, oh, nope, I, that's a lie. Someone asked, would it still be Brolin though? In I don't know what they were talking about. CLKO asked about Brolin. My theory, no matter what you're talking about with Brolin, is that they should have Deadpool kill the Fox universe and Brolin should be both Cable and Thanos, and that'd be very funny. But in the meantime, this is the post credit scene. I'm going to say one of my favorite comments is from I Blame Gravity One Self content of Koi Speed is like a week's worth of content of shows at, oh sorry, I read it wrong. We're gonna go back. An hour of content at Koi Speed is like a week's worth of shows at normal speed and that is an honor, that is a pleasure, I appreciate you and I'm gonna try to do more than one show a week. So theoretically, with those numbers, if I do more than an hour every day, then somehow I will get into the future. That's right, the speed force lives on in me. We're gonna get to the future of news. Uh, but I, once again, wanna thank you. Let's see if we're gonna wrap up this time. And uh, thank you guys, and thank you comic books for existing. Let's see if the 